Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fans POV at Dragon Con 2013 in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> um, I'm your host, Chrissy Lawler, and with me are Ernie's over doing some editing. Of the Ernie's doing the editing at the computer, and we've got Tom and our friend Steve. And we're all Jamaican Steve. Jamaican Steve, yes, very important. <laughs> we're I'm doing the show while everyone's packing and getting ready because we leave tomorrow morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dragon Con is a four-day convention over Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. The that, best con ever. <laughs> that literally takes over almost all of Atlanta. What do you mean almost? <laughs> now there are a couple of people who live on. There are a couple of people who live under rocks. That's true. Rock um. livers! <laughs> Rock livers! <sighs> We've been coming for a couple of years now, and, you know, it's it's routine now. Uh, we decided, past two years we've been doing this, we've gone Wednesday to Wednesday to avoid traffic, which is a kind of good idea for those who I like to avoid traffic and all that. Somebody actually left their, I, I met yesterday, was leaving today. Just yeah, um, while, we were, while we were doing uh, errands and getting food and doing some more sightseeing, saw people leaving hotels today, which is Tuesday. Um, for a couple of us, Ernie, Tom, Pirate Chris was here. He already took, he left on his flight tonight. Yes, people, Pirate Chris flew. I on his on his own he flew that's how big dragon con is um <laughs> know, is horribly terrified of flying <laughs> and ice in general but mostly flying mostly flying um, video here yeah I'm not a, I am not a fan of He's flying anybody we're going to die <laughs> thank you Tom <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so you're gonna show this to Patty, aren't you? You're gonna be like, oh, yeah, look what a wimp right. your boyfriend is, right? Right? Yeah. Chris, we're gonna die. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> there we go, you know what? I hope you all go to hell. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm getting a camera out to take my last pictures of me. Um. Oh this year is year three for me, Tom, Ernie, and Chris. But this year, um, Jamaican Steve and, uh, well, Montana's here, but he's in the shower right now. <laughs> this year was their first year. Uh, so we had a couple of, we have some new input for this year for those who haven't gone. So it's like they get to, we get to see what their impression was. But we'll start off like we always do. Um, First, we got some some tips for some new timers. Uh, if you're gonna go, definitely go early. We have they do have pre reg pickup. We what got closed earlier this year than ever before. Um, actually, this year was it was quite busy this year. Um, they did have a lot of technical problems with the computer the system. Yeah, the servers were down a lot. Um, they did have a lot of technical problems, but it's a lot longer than most other cons. Most of the other cons I've ever been to that have pre reg pickup, it's like a four to six hour window. Dragon Con has a 12 hour window where you can pick up your badges. Also, not so bad. Yeah. It also, it also, um, Dragon Con's big works with um, this one organization for blood donations. So, yep. So they they do that on on Thursday as well with a, a little bit of entertainment. You do it throughout the con. I'm just saying for for the pre reg day. They um, it's a 12 hour pre reg pickup. You can also buy your badge at the door on that Thursday as well. Really expensive, but sometimes really fast. Yeah, it's yeah. depending. Tell Montana, Montana will tell you that story. Yeah, um, our friend Mike Montana, he picked up his badge at the door. It took him less time than it took all of us to who pre-regged because the pre-reg line was backed up due to the server. Uh, like we said, Thursdays, it's a 12-hour um, time. You can pick it up. It's a four-day con. It's Friday to Monday because Monday being Labor Day. We usually recommend, like we've been doing, we come Wednesday, we, we arrive Wednesday during the day, and then we leave the following Wednesday. You could leave Tuesday. It's just, because of all the traffic, since it's just such a huge con, we do recommend coming early and staying late. There are a lot of attractions in Atlanta you can stop at. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them because I'm the one holding the mic, but um, Tom and Stephen, Stephen Ball said, there's the Georgia Aquarium, uh, the World of Coca-Cola Museum. There's also a zoo, the CNN Center. There's a lot of places you can go to. 
um, for tourism long uh, while the con's not open to kill time before and after the con. Um, but I think we'll, we'll go into a little bit more of that later because um, we had some fun with some of those events. Uh, for the for everybody, this is an open question for everyone. What was everyone's fir- um, expectations for the weekend? And if you have an answer, come t- close to the mic. Get laid. <laughs> List, don't. Don't listen to Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of fun. And okay. yes, I had a lot of fun. Okay, Tom. I love Dragon Con, but I was very upset that the two music acts I usually listen to were not here. But I still found a lot of great panels to go to. Uh, I did listen to a band that Ernie and Chrissy and Chris like, and they, they're great. Uh, we had a lot of... Uh, What's the name of the band? Which one? That Ernie and Chris really like. And Chris and Emerald Chris, Rose? Emma Rose. Um, but there was a. <laughs> Emma Rose is the band. They were a great band. They're, they're, Dragon Con is their home con. That's actually why we came so many years ago. Yeah. Uh, but um, <laughs> we found a lot of great people. There's great, all sorts of great stuff going on. And uh, I mean, the panels are great. The people are great. <laughs> Costumes. I don't even wear a costume half the time, but Tom, Tom, just what was your God. first? What was Tom, your expectation Tom. of the con, though? Oh, I love the con. <laughs> my expectation to actually go to a dragon, uh, dragonfly drinking panel, which they didn't have. Yeah, um, yeah. What about you, Ernie? Uh, what was your expectations? Uh, my expectation was just to have a good time and meet as many people as I can and try to film them cosplaying and all that stuff. Actually, to really see some really good cosplays. That's my expectation. Because Dragon Con always has good cosplays. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, I have to agree definitely with Ernie. Um, we all agree. Dragon Con is like the best in cosplays I've ever seen at any con because there's such imagination and variety because it's not a con that is wholly ex- specific to a certain genre. Like, yes, an- most of the anime conventions we go to, there are definitely cosplayers that are non-anime, but you're going to see more of the non-anime here. You do see anime every once in a while, but you got a lot more steampunk, Star Wars, Star Trek, fantasy, comic books, yeah. fantasy, um, sci-fi, fantasy and- sci-fi, TV, movies, video games, you name it. Um, I, I, I saw maybe like five or six anime cosplays. So it's like it's this such variety, and cosplaying the cause the quality of cosplay is great, especially some of the accessories. Like some people will cosplay out their cars. It's it's yeah, amazing. We the saw the Mach Five. We'll get into that later. Some people actually spend a full year working on their costumes. Um, and then I also have to agree with Tom. Tom and I, for the past two years, have been gone to the Firefly Drinking Song Panel, which is usually run by Mark Gunn and um, Pandora Celtica. Two. Um, um, musical group um, acts that have always been here at Dragon Con. Um, this year they were not at, the, at Dragon Con, and there was no there was no Firefly Drinking Song panel. So we were very upset because that's usually our Saturday night. <laughs> Is going. So upset. <laughs> we were really upset by that. Um, I just had to go to more Elmer Rose performances, but um, definitely I was I was hoping for that, but that didn't happen. Like like Ernie said, cosplayers, and like Steve said, just to have fun, which we always have fun at Dragon Con, especially with when you go with friends. Uh, we'll go, um, Steve, I want to ask you this one first, because since you're the new guy, um, the first guy, the first timer, what was your first impressions of Dragon Con? Uh, I think my first impression of Dragon Con was that it was, like, really big. So, like, it was, this is definitely the largest con I've ever been to. And I haven't been to a whole lot of cons, but I have, I have been doing cons for quite some time. So, uh, that was, uh, I'm not going to say it was overwhelming, but it was, uh, it was amazing to see, to see downtown Atlanta transformed into a convention center. Like, that's, uh, that was my first impression was, uh, was, wow. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I need to ask uh, Ernie and Tom because usually it's the same first impression. It's like, look at all the people. <laughs> you, know, yeah. more, you know what? Actually, I do have to admit the, the, the actual best thing about this year to me was the dealer's room getting moved to a different building. Oh, yeah. That was a big thing because it opened up a lot more area for panels and for musical performances. So I was definitely... That was, yeah. that was a new thing. Yeah, um, there was a lot... We will go through it um, as we get to the topics. There was a lot of um, physical changes to Dragon Con due to the size growth each year. Um, but that was one of, my fir- one of my first impressions as well. It was like, wow, they added on a new building where they put all the... Just the dealers went into that building. Yeah, 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 yeah our... F- 
first year that was the first year the Western was born. If you didn't hear Tom, um, the first year we went, which was 2011, was the first year that the Weston was part of the Dragon Con community of buildings. Uh, this year they added the, uh, was it the World Mart? America's, America's Mart. Mart. America's Mart, which is almost like just a conference building, and they turned how many of the floors, two of the floors, floors into floors. In the two floors. floors. Yeah, two full floors. But the second floor, oh my God. Was yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll go into that more later, but they did add for that building so that they could open up. They moved around some of the rooms where the dealer's rooms used to be in the con, were now um, in the hotels, were now the Walk of Fame. They they added... Well, no, no. They, they, the Walk of Fame, instead of being in the Hyatt, in the, in the Hilton, it was now in the Marriott. It was? Yep. Yeah, where the dealer's rooms... Well, yeah. where the dealers yeah, rooms, so busy I never went over there. where the dealers, the three dealers room were in the um, Marriott, okay, turned the into floor, the. Um, I'll go into more later the uh, Walks of Fame, and I think the Walk of Fame build uh, rooms in the Hilton were changed into panel rooms, because like we said, it's getting big. They're running out of room. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is panels. There are so many panels, so many tracks. Dragon sex. <laughs> Dragon Con has... <laughs> I, one, of, one of the best panels. panels. Dragon sex. Dragon Con has... I'm trying to think how many tracks they have. They have like oh, yeah. like maybe two dozen tracks. Easy. Yeah. All over that. I would say close to 25. What's the, what's the program? You'll find I'm, I'm, I know. I'm going to load it right now. Um, I'm trying to think. One, two... Oh, well, someone will count them uh, as, as I talk because I can't talk and count at the same time. Um, She's a woman. She can't multitask. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> watch it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because I get things done for people. Um, Dragon awesome. has so many tracks with so many different panels that, that just go on the whole weekend. Um, it's not like some, some cons where they're at hotels or um, they do have 24-hour programming. Dragon Con does not. I think it has like... 20 hour programming. It starts at like 8 a.m. and ends the next morning at 2 or something like that. Um, there are just a lot of panels with the, between uh, at least 48 uh, tracks. At least almost 50 tracks. That's And, and it, it depends on the day. Some counted, days. I just counted 52. 52 kit tracks. Some days it does go 24 hours. Oh, yeah. 53. 50, um, Tom has, has given me the information. There are 53 different tracks for Dragon Con. That includes... That includes the biography. Okay. Live performances. Okay, that's live performances. Um, Tolkien... Oh, I'm just going to name a few. Tolkien, Whedonverse, yeah. which is anything Josh Whedon. Fantasy literature. No, Whedonverse Fancy. is actually not everything Josh Whedon. That's actually one of the buildings. Okay, it's most... Okay, never mind. But it's still... It's still a track. Uh, Sci-fi literature, uh, gaming, the art shows, costuming, filk, kaleidoscope, which is just a general like mix of what doesn't have its own. Um, it's not big enough to have its own track. There's puppetry. There's uh, British sci-fi. It's it goes on and on. Uh, you can always find something if you like it. It's at Dragon Con yeah. somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very true. Um, like I said, like seriously, like I, I really spend a lot of time at Weedonverse because I love Weedon stuff. I only went to like three panels over there, and I went to about twelve or thirteen different panels. Had a great time at every single one of them. Actually, more fun at the ones that were not in the Weedonverse. All right, well, since now we've described pretty much the panels, if you guys want to go into detail, a couple of panels that you guys have done, gone Dragon to. Sex. Defiance! Dragon <laughs> sex. All right, you want, you want to tell us what... Gaming story ever. Worst gaming story. All right, anyone want to describe one or two of their panels? Um, well, I actually, one of the, uh, the first one I went to was actually for Weedonverse. It was actually um, a panel just with stars from Dollhouse, Buffy, uh, Angel, they were, they were just a few stars, and they were just, you know, an open Q&A for them, just talking about them, you know, finding out, you know, questions about their characters, what they like doing, you know, how it was, how was it to work for Josh Whedon, things like that. Um, another panel I went to actually with Steve was Dragon Sex, which was based on a, uh, I was on, talking about on the Dragons of Pern. The Dragons of Pern is a book series. It was based on the mating co mating season within the books, which they go into a great detail. And of the dragons. This is this dragons. is not dragons having sex with humans. This is dragon on, on dragon, dragon only. It's a discussion of dragon sexuality. <laughs> and it was a very raunchy, very very, very raunchy, uh, very fun 
<laughs> panel, and we were told that if it was actually being run by the person who wrote the original books, it, it would, would be been more, more raunchy. Oh, just so you know, a lot of panels are adult. <laughs> just, yes, just, there, just a lot so you know. Adult content. Uh, we went to the Marvel versus DC, which was a. Uh, a panel between uh, a, like a, a game show competition. Yeah, it was like a it's game pretty, show competition. Yeah. It was like a Jeopardy game show. It's pretty cool. Um, they were asking a lot of Marvel questions, which upset me because I'm mostly a DC fan. It was a lot of Marvel movie questions, yeah, and movie yeah. Questions. But uh, no, that, that was that was pretty good. Those were most of the panels I went to. I went to a few others, but nothing stuck out at those. But I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. What, what about you, Steve? Name a couple panels besides uh, Dragon Sex. Uh, but Dragon Sex was really, really good, and they need a bigger room because like <laughs> the fantasy literature track needs a bigger room because it, it was packed to the gills it's every run by, time. It's run by like these two chicks, and they're awesome. And these two beautiful women. One is named Angel, and I can't remember the other. I can't remember the other uh, other woman. Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, Dragon Sex is a great panel, and like I said, it's about dragon sexuality, and they do a lot of things about dragons and and so on and so forth on the fantasy li um, literature track. Um, but um, one of the panels I went to that was also a lot of fun. I'm trying to find Science. the actual, the definitive name of the panel. Um, oh, I'd like to say going to see Emerald Bros is great. And this is the first time I've seen Emerald Bros um, like perform live since Icon like 10 years ago or something like that. Yeah. So um, and they're they're great guys. I got I got to meet a couple of the bad members and they're very endearing, very cool people. Um, that was really a lot of fun. If you have a chance, if you have a chance, then absolutely go see that. Um, um, a lot me of band and Pyro Chris talk to you no matter what band you go to. They're very open. They're very nice. They want you. Well, to we're gonna to talk about music. the musicians mm -hmm. later. Pyro Chris and I went to the Defiance panel and we had a fantastic time just uh, w watching the uh, the actors go like actor and actresses go back and forth and like be catty with each other and uh, talk about their characters and the show and what, what goes into it and you know like po poking fun at each other and so on and so forth. I got to I got to submit my own question to them and um, and get and. Uh, embarrass the moderator, which is always, always a great, uh, always great fun. Um, and then the other really good panel I went to with Montana was worst gaming story ever. But I think that's one of Montana's no, no, very no, few panels. So I will let I will let Montana describe that panel. Um, so he's something really cool to talk about. And uh, yeah, but besides that, just walking around, talking to people, and seeing and seeing all the crazy shit, it was a great time. All right. Well, since Montana's available, uh, Montana, you want to tell us about your panels? Uh, well, spending most of the weekend in. Uh, in the hotel due to sickness and other things along the nature um, didn't really get to go to the con too much um, the time that I did spend there was pretty awesome I, I went there pretty much uh, most of the day on Saturday and then almost the whole day on Monday um, and I went to a panel on Monday with uh, with Steve that was worst gaming story ever Come on, you oh say it right. shut up Tom anyway <laughs> um, pretty much the the whole point of the panel is people compare stories from D&D &D or you know LARPing these things like that where you know certain things happen one of the scenarios was uh, worst player death in uh, I guess in a game that they were playing um, to which Steve, Steve uh, gave a, a great story of how a, uh, a, a Jedi uh, in the Star Wars campaign he was playing, a Jedi uh, dressed in all black pretty much went up and attacked a random bad guy that wasn't doing anything. Somehow their lightsabers got switched and he died because they thought he was the villain. Um, which wound up taking lightsaber and ended up running outside to the police wearing all black and a red lightsaber. <laughs> yes, and uh, Steve actually wound up taking the cake for the entire uh, panel because he had the best story out of everybody. Um, there was a couple other, you know, a um, couple other sections of things that they went over in it, but. Uh, they it was a couple different sections that they did. It was what was it? Uh, best best bard story, story and worst GM and worst GM story. So overall, after the three fin uh, finalists got tallied together and uh, by a round of applause, Steve still won the whole thing. So congrats, Steve, on winning the worst, worst gaming, gaming story <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, yeah, I will Control pass this back off. To you. Right. Uh, Ernie, you want to put in the input on this? On uh. <laughs> No, panels, yeah. You want to enjoy? I'm trying to see. Most of the panels that I went to was a lot of like main event programming. 
Like, I went to the, from the page to the stage uh, comic book pageant, which was all right. The Masquerade was... We'll do that later. We'll, we'll do it later. All right. And, um, but the best time I had was at the parade. I thought the parade was a lot of fun. Well, that's which, that I'm going to need. I want we'll to do, do that panels later. now. Then we'll do panels? The it's, I'm trying to think of any panels I went to out. Um, Did you go to any panels? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay, then. Let me check my schedule. All right. Um, oh, for those who don't, since now that he says his schedule, um, I forgot to mention this earlier. Dragon Con has its own app. Um, for i for for, for smartphones, where you, you it's free. It's it's a free app. Uh, you can download. It basically gives you the schedule for the weekend, maps of the of all the buildings. It gives you vendor information, pr um, performers. Wrestling. That was my favorite panel. I went oh. to the wrestling thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, We're Ernie went. About that. Ernie went to the wrestling battle. Um, it gives you the maps of the buildings. It gives you. Twi um, Twitter tweets of Dragon Con. Um, like I said, vendors. You can do your. You mark your own schedule, and you can give feedback. You can give feedback from the for the schedule uh, for the uh, panels and scheduling. And if you don't want to, you get the app. Like myself, I do not use a smartphone. Do not want to use the app. They do print out a schedule for you that you can actually go through. Oh yeah, they're like the normal cons. They have the paper schedules, yeah. but for those who don't want to carry around the schedule with you, yeah. they and you have a smartphone, you can download the app. What up, Ernie? Okay, up, Ernie? I have my uh, my fr I went to at least one panel this weekend. Beyond Sharknado, cheesy B movies are back. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> right. You and Chris went to that one. Um, that was a fun panel. That was a good one. Chris and er uh, Chris is a big B movie fan, so and Ernie loves half of them too, so they went to that. Um, oh, yeah. I had a million panels planned. How many did I go to them, guys? None. <laughs> I think I went. I went to more per uh, band performances than I did panels. Um, uh, I went, with, like I said, Tom said, we went to the Marvel vs. DC uh, night at an uh, evening at the Brie, which is a um, it's basically a Hobbit it's slash a it's a it's a it's a music performance, but it's a Hobbit slash. Um, it's like a Lord of the Rings. That's what I was gonna say. Melody. It's a not just Hobbit. Lord no, of the Rings well, you didn't. Let, I was fin saying that it's a Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings party. Uh, Emerald Rose performs it um, in, the, in during the intermission between their in their performance. There is a costume contest for Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. And then just more dancing and music. Uh, I always go to them. That one. That one's usually. That's the one where you get in. If you leave, they send someone in. You can't get back in. You have to wait in line. Mm -hmm. There is always a line for that one. Yep. Even even though it's a pretty big room. Um, personally, I think. Um, like I said, you can go into the app and you can give your opinion on panels or in the rooms and all that stuff. Um, that room. It's been in the same room the past three years. The room is too small, and also I've, no, I've what I think I've noticed. It's national ballroom. It's yeah. Far bigger. Uh, well, the thing is, is they always use the same room in the Hyatt. I've noticed that over the every year they keep they change the layout of the chairs, and each year is less and less seating seating space in the room, and also they keep decrease decreasing the space that the people can dance in front of the stage. Emerald Rose, a lot of their songs are dan you, you know, it's not like, you know, typical like professional dancing. It's just fun free dancing and it's really hard when you don't have a lot of space and you'll have about 30 people up there trying to dance in not a tight spot. So that one I've noticed that the that room they keep like uh, experimenting with how to arrange the seating and every year it's been less and less seating. It's just, um, personally, I think it's just badly done, that one. But that may not be them. That may be staff for the hotel pl planning the seating. Um, the only other big panel that I went to the whole weekend, besides all the Elmer Rose performances, was I went on Saturday to the Mighty Morphin Mega Panel. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Power Ranger fan. Um, at the con this year was Emmanu uh, Walter Emanuel Jones, who is Zach, the original Black Ranger, uh, Karen Ashley, the second Yellow Ranger, Robert Axelrod, who is Lord Zed, and Jason David Frank, who is Tommy, the original Green and White Ranger. Uh, though Jason David Frank had his all, he had like four panels this weekend, and then the other three had their own pan four panels this weekend. They did not he was not in any of their panels um, but this was still fun because you knew if you were at that panel you were there to see the three of them <laughs> and it was really fun especially when they started talking about how the fact that Power Rangers had its 20th anniversary last Wednesday and they all felt old and then we all felt old and 
it was a lot of fun. Just Everyone. ask. It was just a big Q and A, and it was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. What did I have next on list? Because I have to keep changing my apps on my phone here. All the old feelings. All right. Um, next, what we'll do is we'll do the uh, special events. Um, like Ernie said, he went to the masquerade. Um, what did you think of the masquerade, Ernie? I, I think I should draw from there at least. Yeah. Let's see. And then we'll talk about the parade. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. Okay. The masquerade was a good time. It was uh. What they do is that with the masquerade, they have a two different divisions. They have a kids slash novice division, and then they have their mas their the adult division. So obviously the kids go up first, and some of the kids were really good. I'm trying to remember some really good costumes that they had there. They had the um they had one with a Spider Man on top of the D in uh, the D train or the seven train, one of those two trains, running around. I thought that was pretty good. Um, they had a couple of baby cosplayers, which was really cute. Those are always, those are always the, the, the all ones. Like, oh, these are cute and all that stuff, yeah. Um, and there's, I'm sure there's more on there. You can see the full show on, we'll upload the full show. Um, as far as the adults go, the, uh, the one that won, the two that really stuck out to me were the Steampunk Avengers and the, um, three actually. Steampunk Avengers, the Robocop that was there. Really good, and then the last one was the um, the guy who played Jim Lovell from Apollo 13. Because of those who know me, Apollo 13 is like one of my favorite movies of all time. And as soon as I saw that, it was so accurate to the movie. It was so well done. Yeah, so those were some of my favorites. You can, like I said, you can watch the entire show plus also the awards and all that stuff on our site. So, all right. Um, next, also, um, Ernie and I, because everyone else wanted to sleep in, and since we were filming it, they wanted to watch it later. Is the the Dragon Con annual parade. Dragon Con, yeah, they still gotta watch it. Um, Dragon Con literally has its own parade that takes over like. I want a parade. <laughs> uh, Dragon Con parade literally closes down like most of the main uh, Peach Street here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, um, for the con Saturday morning. It's a great time because not only is it the con convention goers are at the parade, but like half of Atlanta is there for the parade. Um. Ernie's gone back to watch working on the videos, so I'll talk about the uh, parade. Um, it's basically they break it down into, to a degree, they, they they try to keep it broken up into each genre, like the the DC heroes have their own section, Marvel heroes, the steampunk section. Then it's, if there's enough if there's enough people, the Firefly have their own section, uh, hot horror have their own section. It's really spread out. We did film that, and I'm sure Ernie will put that up too. Oh yeah. Um, it's also a great way, if you can't see all the cosplayers during the days at the con, you can see them in the parade. Because a lot of them are really good, and also they'll, the, some of the, like, like floats for, like, every other kind of parade, people will dress up their cars, there was at least three Ghostbuster cars, there was, the Speed Racer had the Mach 5 there, uh, then there was, uh, the ninth, the Adam West series Batmobile was in the, in the parade. With in, including a, a an Adam West, Burt Ward, Batman and Robin, and the Batgirl from that. There was someone dressed up as the Batgirl from that series, so it's a lot of fun. And then there's a million store troopers at the end. Though the first year we saw the parade, there were um, start uh, Dragon Con has its own mascots, uh, Bob and uh, Bob. Why, why can't I think of the names? Bob and Carl. Carl. Bob and Carl. The hand puppet janitors. So usually at the end of the Dragon Con, the first year we went that parade, they had a bunch of those kind of cosplayers like pretending to clean up at the end of the parade, but this year they didn't have any, which is kind of sad. Um, the only other, I think, special events was well, like there's a lot, like I said, it was concerts. I think pretty much the only concert most of us went to was <laughs> Emerald Rose. Um, we've been, we've been promoting them for years because uh, like Steve said um, we all, me, Steve, Tom and Chris met them about almost 10 years ago at Icon uh, in Stony Brook on Long Island, New York. We met them like almost 10 years ago and Chris has kept in contact with them for over the years um, and that was one of the first reasons we decided to come to Dragon Con because they were kept promoting it and we wanted to see them so we decided to come down and we've had a blast ever since and they love seeing us too. Tom's giving me a weird look. Uh oh, he just made a count of uh, something in one of the books so this is going to be fun. <laughs> Before, there were a few that couldn't make it, but according to the pamphlet, 
410 guests. That Holy includes shit. people from TV shows, movies, authors. Does not include the music acts, just those people. But, I mean, these people have been in hundreds of things. I can remember, I think they usually print out, like, one or two can't make it because they're sick. I think there's maybe a total of... 10 that couldn't make it this whole year at most. Yeah. So that still means they had 400 guests in the Walk of Fame. Oof. Um, for those who don't know, Walk of Fame is um, basically they do one room and they put all as many guests as they can, which is mostly going to be like the movie and um, mostly movie and TV actors will be in that room. And they literally sit them at tables and you can walk up to the table, buy prints and get their autograph and take pictures with them. Those unfortunately do cost money. You just walk up and say hello to them too. Oh yes you can. Just walk up and say hello to them. They, they love, that. actually a couple of the um, volunteers I heard talking while online, they the, the the guests love when people just come up and go, I love you in this, you're a great actor, or whatever, just talking to them they like as well, a lot. Um, like I said, uh, costs to fo um, get photographs with them um, and their autographs. Each price varies depending on the, the star. Um, unfortunately, some people complain, like, why should I have to pay if I pay to get into the con? A lot of these stars, this is how they get paid to be at the convention because a lot of them, I've heard some of them tell stories like sometimes they have to pass up work to come to these conventions and they've got to, like, not all of them are, you know, multi-million dollar celebrities that, you know, they can afford not to work work for a couple of weeks. Um, so, so a lot of them get, this is how they get paid to, to attend the event. Uh, like I said, this year we had a um, couple Power Rangers. Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters was here. George Takei. Uh, <laughs> we've been walking, for those, if you remember our previous years, we've been watching Dragon Ball Abridged. Um, uh, George Takei. William Shatner was here, though I heard it was $150 to get his autograph. I don't even know how. Featured guests. I don't even know how much it was for a picture. Yes, the features. Burns, Lucy Lawless, and Larry Nevaya? 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 Uh, I don't know. Um, usually the featured guests, those are going to be the expensive ones. Um, I did go see Lucy Lawless. That was $75 for an autograph, $50 for a picture. But one of the um, staffers who was um, controlling, was in charge of line maintenance, she said Lucy Lawless is probably one of the very few stars she's ever met that will allow you to take your camera or phone out and take pictures of her while you are waiting in line. You obviously have to get paid to get a picture with her when you get to get to her. But if you're like say the fourth person online and you've got a clear shot, you can take a picture and she does not care. Most Some of them most of them do, especially if it if you have to pay to get their picture, they don't want you taking a picture unless you paid. But they said she's fine with it. I guess it's just the fact that it's a novelty of having your picture with her. Um the, the Walk of Fame is always a lot really crowded because everyone comes to see guests. Uh, the Jason David Frank line was ridiculous. They had, um, there's only so much room in the Walk of Fame because obviously there's a lot of people in it. And they, he had to have three backup lines in the, I think, in the room. Two or three backup lines. It was just so many people want his autograph. But then I'm sure, I think George Takei had a long line too. And there was one other actor, I can't remember his name was, he had like a backup line outside the room. Uh, I believe there was a couple of Buffy stars were here. It's just so many people. Just go to www.dragoncon.org and just go to. Know that. Just go to the guest list and just just they they're all in alphabetical order. Just look through all the guests. It's so many people. Um, there's also like you said the em uh, the musical performers, Emerald Rose, uh, Unwoman, uh, bar the I can never pronounce it. The Bargandin Bards or something like, yeah, that. something like that. I cannot pronounce them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, one of the great things about Dragon Con is you can actually go onto the website if you're going to come. You can actually request bands that you've seen in the past year or actually were here this year or, you know, weren't here this year or whatever or a band that you know very well that has some sort of idea that, like, you know, Celtic music, uh, a, 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 a sci-fi fantasy kind of feel, they will they might invite them. It's You can, uh, you know, say, oh, they didn't see these guys this year. Or, oh, these guys are great this year. DragonCon loves to get their feedback, and they're like, okay, you know, you guys like them? 
Let's invite them back. You know, they they love they love it when you guys give good feedback because that means they know what you guys want next year and what they can continue to provide for you. Yeah, because um one of the boys from Emerald Rose, um Clyde, he happens to run the concourse stage, which is basically like it's an informal stage, um where bands will perform little mini sets and just where you just wa- if you're walking past and you hear them, you can just stand there because it's out in the hallway. And he said they love getting the feedback, um because they believe that the, the concourse stage believes that music and the bands are an integral part of Dragon Con. They really are. He, every one of the, the the band's performances, he when he would like when everyone was tuning and getting their equipment up set up, he would say, "Please give us the feedback on the app, on the on the website. We want to hear what hear from you. Tell us who you liked, who you didn't like." Who you want to hear or see come to the con? Like Tom and I said, we were really upset that um, Mark Gunn wasn't. Li- uh, we heard from someone that Mark was there with the Bards. Well, we didn't see him. But we didn't see him. He didn't have his own uh, too much of his own stuff. I think he had one or two p- workshop panels. Yeah. Um, but Mark wasn't there. Like listed big as a name. Pandora Celtica wasn't there, so we didn't get. So that's we were really upset I by those. We writing. I want them back next year. Yeah, Dragon Con. If you're watching, we want Mark Gunn and we want Pandora Celtica and we want the Bedlam. Bards, just putting it out there. <laughs> Firefly Dragon panels. The first year we went, it was very small. Second year, they gave us a freaking ballroom, and it and was it still felt- packed. 20 minutes before the performance, and they were like, "Oh my God, we need even a bigger room." <laughs> yes, it was the well. They, this gets so packed, it's not even funny. Well, the best part is the fact that you know it's in the Whedon, in the uh, Weston, which is basically anything steampunk and Whedon related, and we kind of had the ho- that hotel last year, so it was convenient. All right, moving on from that. We are going to do talk about the dealer's room. Like we said, they added <laughs> they added on the um, America's Mart, which, like we said, is like almost like a conference building. Um, they added that to the uh, Dragon Con building family, uh, so they could move. They made the room for the Walk of Fames in the. Um, and more b- panel rooms in the Hilton, the Hilton and the Marriott. Uh, it was two floors of r- building of rooms of dealers, and they added more dealers. And there were just, I think we counted maybe seven or eight rooms of dealers. The first room was pretty large. Um, there was, I would say, there was probably about, I would say, sixty to seventy dealers in the first room. The following two rooms were. Pretty small. I think they had maybe five or six each. And I, I, when I walked out of that, I was like, "Oh, that's it." And then somebody goes, "Yeah, I'm up to the second story." And I was like, "Oh, they have some more up on the second floor." I walked up there, and I walked into the first room, and I was like, "Wow, they have twice as many in this first room as what they have in the big room downstairs." So there was probably about 150, yeah. 140 there. And then I walked to the second room, and there was even more than there. There was at <laughs> least. Probably 300, 400 dealers of this year, yeah. And I mean, they they sell everything and anything you can think of. They there, there's hundreds. Uh, I would have to say there's probably at least 40, 50 people selling uh, steampunk gear and bags and stuff like or that. Or medieval corsets and yeah, yeah. Um, accessories. That's another big like one. You can, you can uh, literally. There's a few weapons dealers here. Um, I actually LARP and I actually got uh, latex weapons from uh, two different spots because okay. there were places selling latex weapons. Right. Uh, well, I want to do the we'll do the purchase yeah. after. I just want to yeah. go over the room. But you can like literally walk in the dealer room with the intention of buying something specific and probably find it, as our Fred Montana did. I'm not gonna say what he bought because in case his girlfriend gets to this be- before he gets home. But um, he went to the dealer room and went, I want to find blah. And within like 12 minutes, we found exactly what he's looking for. It's it, it, everything. Everything is sold there. No, yeah. Um, d- yeah, the dealer's room, is, there's like a million of every, um, there's a million of every vendor, like I said. Um, there's tons of plushy vendors. There's a bunch of okay. corset and medieval gear uh, vendors. Um Okay, that is yours. Um, there's like, like Tom said, there's the web. There's a couple of weapons dealers. There's the LARPing, which is like the fake um, weapons. Which buy at the first place. Always look around. You can find yes. better deals. That's always a tip we give. Um, try to shop around because, like we said, especially the bigger cons, you're going to find multiple vendors for certain pro- um, items and products. <laughs> Oops, sorry. So don't buy the first thing you see. You might find it like, even if it's five dollars cheaper than another vendor. That's, that's an extra five dollars in your pocket for lunch. That's what I found. When I went, by, when lunch. I went, 
When I went to buy my latex weapons, I found the first spot and I looked around. I found the decent sword, hundred thirty dollars. I went to the other guy, sixty five bucks for a better for a sword just as good. And I mean, like I'm very happy with what I got. Yeah. So definitely don't always um, grab the first first thing you see. And like I said, it's also like we said, it's so big. There's so many vendors. There was a I to be perfectly honest, I don't understand why, but some people do like them. I noticed there was a quite a few bootleg DVD vendors. Um, cause you know the one that you'll always be able to tell them because it looks like the the inserts for the DVD cases were printed on a home computer. Um, they're DVDs you literally cannot find anywhere, and most of the time it's because they're either not in print or they are no longer in circulation. So something really cheap, actually. Yeah, they're not. Then a lot know. of them aren't fair priced, but. I buy hero clicks every once in a while, and usually now the packs. So when you buy them, yeah. like fifteen, six, uh, you know, like anywhere from twelve to fifteen dollars. I found some of them for six dollars packs that were, you know, closed, and I was like, hell yeah, I'll buy them at six dollars. Oh yeah, that's another one. That there's always a lot of, um, especially like Dragon Con and certain cons, is the gaming dealers. Whether it's um, role play books, dice games card games. One of our friends, she's going to be happy when I saw it. One of them, the vendors, there's this one card game, Flux. They now have a board game for it that they must have been released very recently. They had that on the shelf and it said on big sign, it said brand new. Uh, I saw a lot of themed monopolies. Like, I was looking for one in particular, but I saw a ton of them. There was Doctor Who Monopoly. There was Scooby-Doo Monopoly. Just anything you can think of. Um, since we're we're talking, Tom's already brought it up. Um, what what is some of the stuff you guys bought this weekend? Uh, like food. I said, I besides food. Like I said, I bought my uh, latex weapons at two different spots. Um, I got the hero clicks. Um, I personally am saving as much money as possible. I know that sounds weird after spending money, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to buy a new car, so I'm saving as much as I could. But still, I blew like at least uh, almost a hundred dollars in the dealer's room. But I was. I was very happy only to spend a hundred dollars because I mean, like last year when I went, I probably blew what, like at least four <laughs> hundred. I I mean, last year I had money. I wasn't looking for a new car, and I had I, I easily brought like four hundred dollars with me to Dragon Con simply for the dealer's room, and I I, had, I, I bought CDs from uh, some of the musical performers. I bought all sorts of different stuff. I had a lot of fun, and I bought a decent amount of stuff last year. But um, you know, like I said. I knew what I wanted this year, so I went when I was going through. I was like, keep my wallet in my pocket till I find exactly what I was looking for. But um, if you definitely do have extra cash, great place to go. There's always something you can find that if you want it. Right. All right. Um, anything besides the stuff you're not allowed to talk about, Montana, that you bought? Um, that's all I bought. <laughs> okay, so Montana's not going to talk about that. Um, Steve just hopped into the shower, so I think he bought some daggers. He bought something for his girl. Um, he bought contacts. He, had, he bought contacts. Um, that's one thing you definitely see at the conventions is, um, I think this one, this year at Dragon Con, I think I saw like two or three eye, um, eye contact dealers. Yeah, I, I think most of my time Monday there. So. Yeah, yeah, the contacts they sell the the colored and designed contacts. Usually they're really big at anime conventions, but they're definitely just as big. It's uh, like some like this. Um, I'm not sure what else he bought. Um, Ernie probably just want. I think he had the he had his um his GoPro on, so he just wanted the deals room. Did you buy anything, Ernie? No, I wanted, no. To, um, I wanted to buy either um. A uh, baseball jersey or a robe, but I just—it's one of those like I left and I didn't have time to go back. Yeah. All right. I could have seen you bought buying a robe. Yeah. I am gonna say I'm actually going to the Ren Fair this coming up weekend, and there was a lot of costume I liked, but not exactly what I was looking for. Um, I I know the dealers, if any of them here, they're gonna hate me, but you can actually haggle with some of them a little bit. Be oh, like, yeah. you know, be like, ah, uh, would you willing to sell this? You know. 120 dollars instead of 125, and for you know, can, if I'm gonna buy like seven of these, can you give me a deal where yeah, it's like where, where like the last one's only 50 percent off or something? Yeah. Usually they'll do it because they're like, you know what, person's here, they're buying my stuff, and then on top of that, they're just trying, they they, they know, you know, they're just trying to get a good deal. Right. So. And also, a lot of times, um, if you bring someone with you and you talk them into buying something oh, as yeah. well, they'll also give you a discount because you're giving them more business. Oh, yeah. Um. 
uh, Chris had, I was wandering in the deals room with Chris, and sometimes he doesn't buy a lot in the deals room, but this year he actually bought a decent amount. He's trying to make his own um, custom pirate costume, and he actually got to one of the vendors to do a custom shoulder, uh, leather shoulder armor, and he played with, uh, talked back, went back and forth with her on designing and all that, and to get so how much it was going to be, and it was a decent price, and um, I think she was going to throw in something cheaper than she would have with it, like, oh, yeah, it was the design. She was going to charge him, I think, $30 for the design because she'd have to research and come up with the design. But since he already had a, a, an existing um, image, a logo image, she just, all she had to do was maybe do a little tweak on it and she put it on. So she knocked it down, I think, to $10 for the design. Um, he also found um, a scar, um, I think it was like a sash and stuff like that. He found a couple pieces for the, for the um, and he also, he said one of the other vendors um, told him about another vendor that wasn't at the con that he could do, I think, custom uh, dragon scale looking boots. So dragon scale place there too. Yeah, well, I and think it was the dra yeah, and then racers and stuff. Yeah, like but this was like um like certain uh, costumes. Instead of actually getting the boots themselves, they're like a overlay to make it look like you've got the boots on. So they taught they told him about that kind of place for what. So it was what he was looking for. Um, I kind of was, I I came with a list this year. Um, I was gonna get a couple of souvenirs because I I know a lot of. <laughs> it's funny, we I know a lot of people who are either had babies or are having babies soon. So I. I, sometimes I like to get them something, so I got a couple for two babies, um, and you know, plushies. Don't worry, I wasn't getting them anything hardcore like they'd hurt themselves on. Don't worry, I'm not that bad. Um, <laughs> and then I I, I kind of gave into a couple of things I liked. I bought a set of new a new set of di dice earrings. Uh, All those? Yeah, the, these ones are the new ones. Um, the sixes, right? Yeah. No, they're, they're D20s. Oh, the D20s are new. They're clear, yeah. These D6s have, I've, I've had forever. Oh, um, the D20s forever. Oh, I now I have two pairs of D D20 earrings. <laughs> um, and then I, I ended up buying one of the bootleg DVD box sets. I bought Batman the anime, uh, so Batman the series from so the the 19... Is you should never buy them, but I bought them anyway. Well, you know what it is is it was a cheap enough price, um, and was it, the series? it was the 1960s series with Adam West and Burt Ward. Wow. Okay, um, I can forgive that. Well, the Adam thing. The series is the only two I remember. Well, Batman the animated series I have. I own that whole. Oh, okay. I own that own that whole series. Um, what it is is a couple years ago at near Comic Con slash an anime festival, I went to a. Batman, the panel of um, a bunch of writers who did stories and um, art and essays on the series, and someone had asked if they were ever going to release the box set, and they said they were ha that the series had copyright issues and would never be released on box set. And I know some of these boot as mo even though they're bootlegs, they're good quality. Oh yeah. They they might as well have been regular DVDs bought out of the regular store. So I think they for me it was worth it. Allow you once here and like they actually do take feedback on dealers as well. I mean if you oh, buy yeah. something and you're like I bought this and it broke the time I got home and they're like all right yeah we're not inviting that person back we're not gonna. We're, we're going to tell right. them what we heard, and we're like, yeah. you know, this happens more than once. Oh, yeah. I think we had um, one of our first years at Icon, there was a bootleg DVD vendor, and a couple people said that as soon when they put pop the DVD in, it was static, it was horrible, and when they gave feedback to the vendor, the vendor said, oh, tough luck, you bought it. So I, I, I did not see that guy ever again. They had another bootleg vendor who was always there at Icon, but this guy never had any issues. Um, I know there, wa there was... What? Just going back to the bootleg thing, it's really bad because, just real fast, um, in Anime Land, Texas, they had a problem where it's um, one of their bootleggers was selling illegal DVDs, and the actual company, I think it was either Funimation or Aniplex, was there, and they spotted them. And oh, yeah. when they spotted them, they I, I forgot what exactly happened, but it just <clears throat> it ended up that Funimation is suing Anime Land, Texas right now. They're uh, still in the middle of the settlement because they're trying to figure out what happened, what happened with the dealer. What they're going to yeah. try to say was this an authorized dealer or was he really selling bootlegs? But it's the bootlegs are really tough to like. Oh yeah. The, well, most of the time, if they do that, you're cut. They're cut off. They most of the time, when I see with those those DVD um, vendors, they're selling stuff that you can't find anywhere. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Sure. It's yeah. it's like I said, things like that, things that are in, things that are in legal hell, and you physically cannot find like. 
Well, I can't get Chasing World Warriors. Period. The end. It doesn't exist in a box set somewhere. It doesn't exist in, in any other means. Right. What did you get it? If somebody, if somebody has it, you know, I'm going to buy it. I will always support the, the, the legal release of anything if there is a legal release. Oh, yeah. There's a couple things. Like, they have the bootlegs. Like, they have bootlegs of Sailor Moon, the full animated series, which you can't get here in the States. So, but you know what? Something like that. I know they're re-releasing the series. I'm willing to wait until... It is released officially because that's something I would like to give the company my money. You want to support the company, you want to support the artists, the writers, people who actually created it. The, you want to, like we've always been saying for years it with the also, anime. It also inclines that company to make more go to their other stuff and be like, hey, people might want to see this released. Yeah. Right. You always want to support the industry because if we don't support the industry, it will it, it will die. It will die. And we've we'll stop producing awesome stuff. Yes, and. Any of like actors that you know that you love will then have hard times getting work, and you may never hear them again. But yeah, um, um, I'm trying to remember what else I got. I think I got some um, DC themed glasses and all that. So I got a lot of random stuff. I didn't spend as much money as I usually do. But speaking of money, the Artist Alley and the Art oh Show. Okay, Tom, let me let me tell oh the people God. before you start ranting. Um, the Artist Alley is like most other cons, but it's in Dragon Con it's called the Comics Alley because obviously it's going to be more of, yes, it's called the Comics Alley. It's going to be more comic book um, people who write their own comics, who do comic fan fan art. It's like, but it's like most Artist Alleys where it's all a lot of fan art, individ, in, um, yeah, original stuff and plus comics um it's always a good pl a lot of fun because a lot of great artists and and um works and a lot of a lot of times me and tom getting a lot i mean me tom and a couple of my other friends we always get in trouble with those and then there's the art show wow. which is more professional and more original stuff and the art show also will have um auctions both silent and not that's where you get sometimes get into trouble because the pieces can get so expensive. And also, you're not allowed to take any photography in the artist alley and the um, art show because obviously someone might take a picture of something and copy it. Ooh, like half of us have that ta that kind of talent. Um, but uh, though, I, I think artist alley for Dragon Con. Personally, I think it's a little smaller than some of the anime ones I've seen, but that could just be me. And Tom looks like he's about to have an aneurysm. He wants to talk. Well, I was going to say there are two parts to the um, Artist Alley. That was actually where I spent most of my $400 last year. I only <laughs> spent about 100 at the dealer room. I spent about 300 at the Artist Alley. Because I, I, I swear to God, even when I went to Otakon and all the other cons earlier that year with you guys, all I did basically at those dealer rooms was just by pictures but when I went to Dragon Con it was a totally uh, the, the amount the, the, uh, yeah, the, the amount of stuff that they had was just amazing I mean I, I'm, I'm a huge comic book fan I had a lot I bought a lot of uh, you know Marv, uh, a few DC. Marvel a lot of DC Batman Superman <laughs> uh, Robin anything that had to do with you know DC was pretty much bought by me um, this year I only got a few things in the artist alley you restrained yourself. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> so like I said, I need to save my money. Um, I spent about maybe thirty dollars there. I spent yeah about. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I spent 30, I spent about fifty. About fifty dollars, yeah. I spent about fifty dollars there, and like I said, a hundred dealers room actually. Um, when I went though to, they did something very interesting at the art show this year. I don't know if you saw this. Um. When you go into the art show, there, I, I, everything in there is just beautiful. It really is. Oh, yeah. This year, though, they did something that was very interesting. They had a little side part of the art show. Art show, I didn't go into you with you, but every single one of those pictures that yeah. that were selling for, I think like the cheapest one was probably like five hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, they're, they're really good stuff. Oh yeah. But each one of them was actually copied in laser printed on two pictures and they were selling them for fifteen dollars each. That little corner? Yeah. That yeah was um new this year. no that was that last, was last year. year. Um but the thing is year. you're gonna you're gonna see a lot more original stuff in that section last year. I didn't go into it this year this but what year, it did that was last year every, but every it's every picture that I saw that I wanted was in there. <laughs> Except for one, but every single other one, and it, like I said, you know, fifteen dollars, very eight by eleven, oh, eight yeah, by yeah. twelve. It was not really big, but sometimes was, five by seven. Yeah, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> oh, Bless you. Thank you. Um, but like I said, 
it was it was a nice thing in that fact that you know it's like I don't have five hundred dollars to buy this picture. I don't have a thousand dollars to throw at this picture. But I hey, saw one that was forty five hundred. But you know what? I can sit down and like we said, that was sold. Um, <laughs> but I'm not rich like that I can't buy it but it's a really nice picture you can go into this little section now and spend it on 15 20 dollars yeah. to get you know a laser printed one not actually painted but it's just as nice oh yeah it, it, it's not the picture it's not that nice beautiful huge picture but it's definitely worth it to go in there because they have some really nice stuff in there uh has anybody else got any opinions on the uh, artist alley I don't know if anybody went in. Yeah, I don't think you guys all went in. All right, so me and Tom will talk about what we bought. (laughs) What did you... We both bought the same picture of... uh, It was like an old newspaper cover called... It actually kind of looked like a Norman Rockwell. Yeah, but it it writes like the the something post or something. Gotham City Post. The Gotham City Post. And actually, uh, I'm a huge Nightwing fan. Chrissy has gotten into Nightwing recently, too. And it's a picture of Nightwing standing there with Starfire grabbing onto his right arm and Batgirl, ba- Batgirl uh, ba- Barbara Gordon Batgirl grabbing onto his left arm. Tug and of he, War. Tug of War. And he's, <laughs> he's just smiling. He's standing there like, what the hell am I going to do? No, he wasn't smiling. He's like, was he's like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, it's covered. All right. I'm pretty sure he's just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But, um... Besides that, uh, I we saw a few other things. Uh, Tons of. Oh. I I actually bought some. Uh, what what would be the best word? Not pro- provocative, but a little um, a little, um, little raunchy. No, risque. I was risque. risque. No, I would say sexy. I uh, would yes, say sexy. There, there, there was I mean, some. It wasn't artist, too provocative. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the artist does very sexy drawings of a lot of female characters. Um, I saw a few I liked. Uh, of course, one was sold out. <laughs> the first one I actually wanted to get was uh, Raven. And they said that they brought a bunch of them because they sold out of them last year. They sold out of this one in, I think, what they say, a day? A, a day? No, a few hours. They said by the end of Friday, by they were Friday, sold they, out. And Friday, you know, it, it, it was very surprising. But they sold out of that. Uh, I was able to get a Supergirl one. Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of Mary Janes, which I didn't buy any of those. Uh, I thought about getting Rogue, but I didn't want that. Uh, I ended up getting a uh, Little Red Riding Hood one, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, they do a lot. Of, that that artist did a lot of Grimm, Steampunk, and then the DC yeah, Girls. Yeah, DC, Marvel, and Marvel then, Girls, yeah. and then uh, a lot of Grimm. So it was very, it was very cool uh, to do that. The guy right next to him was actually something I bought a lot of from last year, where I got my Batman, my Nightwing, my my yeah. Superman, my uh, everything. You know, I got a whole bunch of them from last year. He. Uh, I did not actually see the artist that I got my favorite picture though from last year, which was uh, the New Justice League. Oh, uh, right. He was not there uh, at any point, that, to my knowledge. It's possible he was there earlier in the weekend, well, but left. I noticed a couple the of them once they sold out, or they sold oh, out their yeah. popular stuff, they didn't come back. The artist that you wanted me to see, you brought me back to them Monday, and you're like, he was here. He's not here anymore. And I was like, no. Yeah, the guy, um, one of the ones I wanted to show Tom, he was there on Sunday. <laughs> And two of the pieces I really, really liked, that, but he only had the canvas versions to show. I wanted the printout, the printed um, sheet ones, and he said he had sold out of both of them. And, and one, I wanted one, them. One of them I probably wouldn't have bought, but the other one she described to me in the canvas version, I'm, and she's like, yeah, it's like $50, $60. I'm like, sold? <laughs> <laughs> the way she described it, I was like, I don't even remember what it was. I was like, sold? Not even yeah. a problem for me. Yeah, um, like Tom, I, I do a lot of DC, especially the Batman family. Uh... I've always been a big Robin fan, and then after a while, I really got into Nightwing. Um, so I bought the same one, that one piece with Tom. Um, I got a couple of. Uh, I got a. De- um, the one vendor had a Demona from Gargoyles. Mm. He also had a Goliath, but Goliath sold out that weekend because he says that Demona sells compared to Goliath two to one. So he brought more Demona. Goliath was still popular, so he sold out. So next year he's probably going to buy, buy, bring triple of both. Um, and then there was like a, a, I got, I think I got a, a Wonder Woman. And the, uh, I got the, the crazy little Robin family. Thing. Oh, there was one that showed. Um, it kind of, it wasn't a Robin family. It was kind of like the Batman's kids. It was the Robins, Nightwing, um, the Batgirls, a couple oh, of two Batgirls. Two Bat. Well, I'm just saying. Um, there was Huntress, yeah, a bunch of um, bunch of the Batman's kids. Then there was I also got a Voltron um, fan art. 
that one I've seen the 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 piece and the author the artist on um Dean. most of these all these artists you will find on DeviantArt. So definitely they and every single one of them has a has a uh, business business card. card. I mean, I literally I, I I when I go through the dealer's room, I might take two or three of them. When I go through the artist alley, I usually every other booth I'm picking up a freaking business card because I just love their stuff. And I'll go home and just look at it online and be like, I wish I had money. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of them when they do sell out, they definitely incur- give out the business cards. So like, if I sold out of it, you can buy it online. Yeah. But, um, there's a couple of the ones I got. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. I know one of them. I I followed the the um the artist on Facebook. It's called J L number eight it's basically the justice league like superman batman green lantern if they were eight years old and they all went to school together in costume <laughs> it's the, his comic strip is hysteric it's adorable and hysterical the truth. <laughs> yes one of them was a party for wonder woman's wonder girl it was wonder woman's birthday and she had the lasso of truth and they were playing truth or dare and she goes i it dare power girl power girl didn't think that superman liked her yes it, 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 you know eight years old and the crushes um yeah it was like i dare you to to to, to, to pick them. truth, yeah. Um, it, that guy's really fun. Um, I forgot his last name. I think it's Yale Stewart. Um, on Facebook, J. Uh, like I said, the the group is J L eight. Um, I've got tons. I'm gonna have to go through all my business, all the um, the cards. But like I said, it's a lot of great artists. Um, some of them are just unbelievable. Well, obviously, some of them are different compared to your what you your style what kind of styles you like uh there were a couple like i knew they were if you buy anything from them every artist will sign without an extra price added on they have no problem if you buy something and they're not there because they're at a panel or something you come back they'll sign it no hesitation oh yeah they love they actually like to sign their stuff because it's also been like you were nice enough to buy from me and i if i sign this i know that you're probably if you you know you have a friend who likes this you'll bring them over eventually you right. know? Like, yeah like one of the pieces um i really liked it and it was one of those oh if you a lot of them will also do oh if you buy more two, two or three it's, it, the, 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 the price is 20, discount first dollar is 20 everyone after that is another 10 you know yeah. pirate just touched out in north carolina Woo! don't care, don't uh, care. yeah chris is flying oh, home supposed to no um yeah the Still got they will discount you for um, for buying multiple things, but the vendor I saw like two that I wanted, but I couldn't pick a third, and I wanted to get the discount. So I'm like, you know what? I bought one of the other uh, p- pieces. Up, oh, go, Ernie. Um, I bought one of the pieces. I bought a second one because one of my other friends I know likes the character and the show. So I bought him a copy, and I got him. I got that one signed, and I got it personalized. Well, so yeah, actually, last year I got something for Rebecca, my sister. Um, surprisingly, I actually. I bought a bunch of stuff and I was like, I, I actually went to a place and they're like, if you buy three, you get the fourth free. And I'm like, I want this one, this one, this one. What other one do you want? Oh, get one for free now. And I was sitting there for five minutes and finally I go, I like none of this. My sister likes that though. I'll take that. And I gave it to my sister when I got home because it, it is nice. Like if you, there's always, if you have a friend or a family member, you know, that likes something. Yeah. I mean, even even your sister, not really into sci-fi and fantasy, but you find th- stuff for her all oh, the time yeah. here. She's a big, she's big into the fairies. Like one of the the artists, I would have, if I knew. A business card for my sister because she's yeah. into that too. If I if I I already had something planned that I wanted to get my sister. Otherwise, I would have gotten her probably a piece of fairy art because she's got her own apartment now with her fiance, not boyfriend anymore. Fiance. Yes. They got engaged last week. Um, engaged before the reason. No. Oh yeah, I did, we, they just <laughs> didn't tell anybody until they got the ring. Um, <laughs> But I would have gotten something something she could put up on the wall. But now i got something else for the apartment. Uh, well, before me and Tom keep rambling, we'll move on to the next topic, which is outside of the con. Things that you can I'm go... I'm actually going to say there's one more thing at the con. Uh, oh, 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 well, we, we, I'm, I'm not going to... Um, that, that's okay. Next. okay. Um, I that topic's that, that, that topic's next. To to that. Yep, I've got it in order. That's okay. the next topic. Um, the, this topic is going to be outside the con. It's outside the con, but it's part of the con. Yes, it's definitely something part of the con. Um, there's like I said earlier, there are a lot of things you can do in Atlanta that are out. So they're not in the con. One or two of them are actually do have association with the con. Um, the Atlanta Aquarium, the Georgia Aquarium. 
there's a lot of it's, it's beautiful there. Um, they got a lot of things inside of it. Uh, Dragon Con they does do have, do have has an event them. has an event with them on Saturday night. It's there is a fee to get in. I don't know exactly it's how much it is. Cheaper than the usual price, though. Yes, it's cheaper than usual admittance, and literally. The, if you go with the con, you have your badge and you pay it and you give them the fee. We li the con literally has free reign of the um, aquarium. the aquarium. Uh, obviously, certain things are certain ex exhibits are closed because the, it's outside of operating hours. But the con has you know a part. Basically, it's the a night at the the, the aquarium party. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't think any of us has ever been there yet. We just there's just so much to do at the con. We never make time. Um, Ernie's in the shower now. Well, yeah, Ernie's in the shower. He, also the baseball. Um, there's, there's, there's the World of Coca-Cola, which is the Coca-Cola Museum, because Coca-Cola originated here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's it's cute. Once or twice. <laughs> once or it's, twice. It's worth, going at, it's worth going at least once, especially if you have a if you have a day to kill or some time to kill because you arrived early or you're leaving uh, or you're leaving a day or two after. It's, it's worth doing it at least once. Yeah, it is. I will admit that. It, 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 I didn't go this year because I went the past two. <laughs> And I'm a little. If I'm not feeling. Thanks to Montana, I'm not feeling 100. percent I think I got caught as cold. I think a couple of people co think they caught Montana's cold. And uh, I didn't go, but uh, I remember the past two years. It was pretty fun, um, you know. But I, like I said, I didn't go this year because I just wasn't feeling up to it. Yeah, it's just. So it's one of those things where it's it's cute. It's fun, especially if you got little kids. Um, w with us, it's just. It's so cutesy and silly. That we over, we have too much fun because we're over exaggerating it. And we torture Chris. Right? Uh, well, we usually torture Chris <laughs> when he goes because there's a couple of movies, uh, videos, and all that. There's a lot of cool stuff like they have. Um, I think it's Olympic torches from like oh, yeah, ten, uh, ten or ten or eleven. Uh, I think about ten years of it, um, of the Olympics. They have the torches because Coca-Cola is a. Um, Proud What's sponsor. the word? Sp proud sponsor. Yes, and they always say. That, it's right next to the uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic uh, Park. But Olympic Park. About, they definitely have about, the. They have the Atlanta. Yeah, about three locks. They have the Atlanta torch. Yeah. They have the London 2012 torch. I think it's one of the 2010, yeah. 2008. They have like maybe about ten years worth. Uh, and on top also, of that, they also. Also, as you're going through this museum that they have, it's actually also part of the factory. They are actually making coke. And you can see them actually moving the bottles and right. filling the bottles and doing the mixes, and it's, it's just amazing. You can see. All yeah, that. the one room um, when we were there today, actually, unfortunately, the that part of the uh, museum was not functioning. They did not have the little factory up and running. It's possible they were done for the weekend because they probably knew they were going to be busy this weekend. They had in production, and they probably just shut it down for the day. Uh, at the end of. The tour, uh, the museum tour, is the tasting room, which is usually where you have. I think they said Coca Cola makes about f f a couple hundred different products around the world. In the tasting room, they have about sixty. They have one. They have like, oh, here's what we sell in Germany. Here's what we sell in Italy. Here's yeah. what we sell in these countries. And then you can walk over to a little side room that they have, where all the American it's stuff. All it, it's the new Coke machines. If you've seen them, where it's like. Here's four. Here's like 35 different flavors. You press it, and then it's like, oh, you chose Coke. What? Uh, you chose actual Coca-Cola, not Diet Coke or anything. You chose Coke. Would you like Cherry Coke? Would you like Vanilla Coke? Would you like Coke with lime? Would you like Coke this? Would you like, like that. just regular Coca-Cola Classic? And then you can and mix. You choose that, and you can. It, it's just they have all these different flavors. It's literally about 100 flavors alone. Right. right Which there. they have actually a lot of um, a lot of fast food restaurants are now, now starting to carry yeah. those machines. I, I know, know um, my Burger King got one like three years Burger ago. Burger King, oh my God. Wendy's has them. McDonald's has just started to get them in. I think. Oh, yeah. There's a, a few McDonald's. So that's that's for some people, that's the highlight of the of the a tour of the museum. For certain people like Chris, who aren't soda fans, it's not as he can try though. They, uh, they do have non-soda drinks. Non they have no. Drinks. They have sports drinks, fruit juices, yep. teas. He was upset. His favorite one was not there this year. Oh, I think they've added a couple of new flavors. Okay. And then you'll have some ones that are like the acquired taste in other countries. I think was awesome. was one of them was a germ was a German um Italian. like. It was Italian. It was like an Italian ginger ale. It was so bitter. 
Ugh. Actually, from last year. But some people like it. It's in, some of that stuff. It's acquired taste from their their countries. Um, other places you can go in. Then after that, after well, the I'm saying as you leave, they there's have, the they always give you a bottle of coke. Yes, you get a free yeah. bottle that they manufacture there in the building as a free bottle. The glass bottles, just to yes. put, put that in the classic the classic glass bottle. Yes. And then you walk out into and the merchant the, the gift shop. shop. And the gift shop is oh so much stuff. Oh my god, it's so big <laughs> and it's all. Coke, Coke, Coke themed products. Everything is Coke. It's Home big. goods between plates, salt sakers, uh, games, clothes, accessories, games. toys, yeah, just, there's so Christmas much. ornaments. It's all Coke, and it's just like, oh my God, there's so, so if, much more. If Coke. you're a Coke fan, this <laughs> if you're a Coke fan, this is a place to go. Uh, besides the Coca-Cola and um, the aquarium, there's the CNN Center. The uh, there's the the zoo. zoo. Um, there's you, you can also go to baseball games a lot. Um, they'll have Thursday night. This Thursday night is night at the Met, I believe, is the name of it, or night at Turner Field. I'm not sure. Remember which? Yeah, Ernie's the sports fan. Ernie's this baseball fan. Baseball. Well, he's sports, but he's mainly a baseball fan. He would know. Um, what Dragon Con has is they will shuttle from the main hotels. Especially if you're in costume, over to the field, and they do a costume parade before the game. Oh, yeah. Walking uh, around the field in the parade. Oh yeah, I think they also costume. get discounts yeah. at the at the and if people, you're in costume. There are people who go just for that. They're like, oh, it's all my friends from Dragon Con are in costume. Let's walk around the field. Woo-hoo! One of our friends really that when she heard about that, she was very tempted to come with us because she's a huge cosplayer and she's a huge Venus. baseball fan. Venus. Venus. So we we almost. Had had her coming this year, yeah. last minute, like two weeks before the con, she was almost gonna come. Yeah. But next year, I think she's gonna come next year. We have a lot of people. Oh, yeah. We, we, right now we have about twenty people. Yeah, twenty now. people want to join we us next year. Next year, and we're like, we're gonna need another two hotel Tell rooms. rooms. <laughs> yeah, that's, be fun. Um, that's that's a big thing. Also, Dragon Con, we should talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about that uh, towards the end. Uh, next is the big thing. We've been we've mentioned it in almost every topic. Cosplayers, oh, the big thing for most conventions. I, cosplayers. I admit this year, once again, as I said last year, two years ago, I remember some of the most sluttiest costumes I have yes. ever seen in my life, and I don't mean like, oh, they're they, they have very little clothing on. I mean, damn, the sluttiness of them. It wasn't. It wasn't like, oh, I'm not wearing. Uh, much clothing. It's like, oh, I'm wearing clothing, but I'm wearing it in a way that you know I want to get fucked. Um, <laughs> Watch the. <laughs> wow. Well, right. so We're supposed uh, to be a family much, show. Okay. Pretty much, you're telling me that you're that but, girls are asking for rape. Um, no, we did not say that. No. I said they want to have sex. Big difference. Yes. Um, this year, last year, and this year, not so much. There was a little bit more this year than last year. I will say that, but. This year, once again, very. I think a lot of them were more artistic this year. Yeah, a lot more wholesome costumes. Except for body painting. Yeah, I did see a couple body painting ones. But a a lot more uh, wholesome costumes. And costumes, like you say, from every genre that is sci fi fantasy. We had anime, we had uh, steampunk, video games, TV shows. uh, I mean, anime. you saw a great co- I would have loved to have seen them. You saw the uh, Didi and Didi today from Batman Beyond. I would love yeah. to have seen them. Yeah. Um, there was there was times the, you were the, just the original uh, D and D crew from oh, the D and yeah. D uh, for the, the, the D show. Dungeons um, and Dragons, Castle Crashers, the Castle Crasher characters. Oh jeez. Um, reboot of, um, Bob from Reboot. reboot yeah. yeah. A lot of like actually really. Yeah. Oh, and the most inventive costume in the world, the floor of the Marriott. Yes, yes uh, we that actually. That was actually a great costume. I felt I was. Um, I actually Me and Ernie were kind of after the weekend was over. We basically I went through Instagram and we went through Facebook and we found people who posted pictures and one of them was I, two guys I, who were dressed as soldiers I, camouflaged as the carpeting I of the Marriott. I actually saw somebody when I was walking through the Marriott. The only time I was walking through, I walked by and I'm like, "Why are they taking a picture? Oh my god, there's a guy on the floor that looks like the carpeting." <laughs> I was like, as I walked by, he was getting up from the picture and I go, Best costume this year. <laughs> Best costume ever. He's like, thank you. It took us like three weeks to do it. I was like, I don't care. Best costume I've ever seen. Well, with Dragon Con, there's a lot of... Uh, 
they, more so than anything, there's a lot of inventive cosplayers. Yes. I, you, you see the crossover ones. Everybody makes a steampunk version of everything. Yes. I've, this year, I noticed a lot of burlesque versions of things. Sailor, the Sailor Scouts, the Disney princesses. I saw burlesque of a lot of things because it's something to change the style. There's also, I saw a lot of Victorian uh, oh, yeah, princesses. A lot, a lot of people. Victorian everything. Yes, Victorian, well, steampunk. steampunk back. Yeah. Steampunk. Well, no, this was just Victorian. Steampunk. Oh, yes, and zombies. <laughs> zombies, yes. Zombified every everything. Cosplayer, there is at least a zombie or a, or a vict or a steampunk version of them oh, yeah. <laughs> of every costume. Finish there is a zombie or a steampunk of everything. My next year's here. cosplay is going to be a zombie steampunk something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much how most people go. It's like I'm going to do. Uh, one time I remember we saw what did we see? We saw. Uh, we saw Wendy's Wendy. Uh, oh, it was Wendy. Um, Wendy uh, Ronald McDonald, McDonald and Wendy and, and KFC. Oh yeah, dressed up and they had the they had the, the on us they had a staff of the Burger King. Uh, oh no, all I zombies and they had the Burger King King's head, head on a stick. Staff. Yep. That, uh, I mean, like, there are some crazy oh, yeah. costumes. KFC was walking on, uh, the Colonel Sanders yep. was walking on the con, like, they had the Colonel. They I saw there was a, they do the, a zombie the bill parade. From, from, I'm just a bill. From, oh, yeah. From Gretchen, like, it's a lot of random stuff and, st and nostalgic great, stuff. I saw a great costume. I saw, well, Wayne. Well, I saw uh, Wayne and uh, Garth. Garth. From uh, Wayne's World at one point, I was like, <gasps> Chris saw them too. And yeah. they actually got down, and like at one point, they they would go, "We're not worthy." And Apparently, they, they like, um. That was great. Well, I think Chris said he wanted to see them go into the uh, to the Walk of Fame because I think one of the actors from one of the uh, from the Wayne's yeah. World movie was there, and they wanted to see them do that. Um, but D Dragon Con is definitely. <sighs> Original, a lot of original cosplays. Yeah. Not necessarily like your own original cosplay, but just something new and different. Um, People will take the costume and they will really make it their own. They'll they'll do whatever they can to be like make it more unique, out. more unique. Check out, you know, I want my picture taken in this costume, and they'll throw it out there like that. Tell them about the Muppet Stormtroopers. Oh, there was Muppet Stormtroopers. I saw, um, yes, Muppet yeah, Stormtroopers. Amazing. Um, I also saw Muppet Zombie Task Force. That was funny. I wasn't able to get their picture. Um, did anybody here cosplay besides me? No. I did. <laughs> well, oh yes, and Steve Chris. did. And well, Chris, we don't count him anymore because <laughs> he's Jack Sparrow. He never goes to the cons. Jack Sparrow does. Yeah, Chris doesn't go to conventions. Jack Sparrow does. Uh, what'd you do, Steve? Huh? What'd you do? I did ye old cyberpunk assassin badass. <laughs> okay. Is that actually a character or just something you made up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, love that I I did dress up. Um, on Saturday I wore my Power Ranger costume that I kind of upgraded a little bit. A lot of people complimented it, but unfortunately, to my knowledge, I didn't get any pictures. It's possible, you know, a lot of the a lot of the con times at cons, you'll find people, you know, do s ninja photo sh photo photo taking. Oh yeah. Um, and then I also had, um, I upgraded, I kind of changed up my medieval outfit. I didn't get any pictures on that one either, but I wasn't in it too long because it was raining and I had to walk everywhere and it hurt. <laughs> and my uh, my uh, corset didn't fit properly because I've lost weight, so it doesn't fit right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, did anybody see any particular trends besides... I think th actually, zombies. I think the zombie and steampunk zombies. of everything. Yeah. I actually didn't see any well, zombies. Really? Yeah. How was that possible? I saw no zombies. That is. Then you must have been really? in one corner of the building. No, I went wow. everywhere. I went everywhere. I saw there no zombies. zombies. Then no, you, you know, know, know what? You know what? They, they knew you were there, so they avoided you. Probably. Actually, there were. I'm going to say this. There were actually a lot less zombies this year than there have been in the past two, but there was still a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, did they actually have the zombie walk? This yes. Year? Okay. Oh yeah, Ernie went to. I, I, yeah, we'll ask Ernie about that in a minute. See that this year? The zombie walk? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll ask Ernie about it after the. I saw it last year from like five stories up, and it was awesome. Oh, I did yeah, not see it this amazing, year though. Yeah. Well, we'll have Ernie talk about that afterwards. Um. What did you think, Montana? A lot. Um. He's on his headphones on. Um, Montana. Hi. <laughs> No, let's leave him be. Let's leave him be. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice any trends with cosplayers? Uh, I was in the con for like a day and a half. I didn't really notice. Okay. Anything. All right. Um, Lots of Avengers. And all I did was walk around as Chris got his picture taken. <laughs> that was my first Otacon. Um, 
No, yeah, I think I agree. Definitely a lot of steampunk and zombie versions. Uh, it's but the most to be particular, the most popular stuff. But to be in general, I think it's just a lot of original stuff. You don't see too many of the same. Um, styles and cosplays too much often yeah. unless you go to the photo shoots yeah well, um, well not even that I mean like uh, I remember last year when we went to the Firefly drinking songs yeah we we had like 12 mouths you know 14 and uh, Anar right. Anaras maybe like 13 Kayleys and then like maybe eight Zoe's yeah eight Zoe's and like 40 or 50 uh, Janes, Janes and then <laughs> at least another five to ten uh, 40 people with just Jane hats that is something I will admit I did not I see, see this no. year he I saw Jane hats in the past two years ago there was a lot yeah last year it was like whatever every four people or three or four people had, had a Jane, Jane hat at least one day on the con this year, I think I sold a total of maybe five. I think I sold like whole, maybe ten throughout yeah. the whole con, and I was like, "Really?" And I was at we were. Is everyone told that they were banned from wearing the JMS? And I was, and I, was I was like at Weedinverse for like almost a day and a half that I was at the con. I was there for all day Friday and uh, like half a Saturday, and I'm like, "Where?" Th maybe there's no Firefly, but <laughs> still, I saw a total of like five hats. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And I'm like, "I." I Last year there was a lot at Weedenverse, but you could just walk like through the Hyatt or oh yeah, or, or, like because Weedenverse is in Western, you could walk through the Hyatt, the Hilton, the Sheridan even, and there's people just like wearing Jane hats. <laughs> I have a feeling that some of these people don't even know it's from, but they're just wearing Jane hats because <laughs> they see people. There it's were, possible. There were people actually sell them in the dealer's room actually. I remember. Yeah. No, I saw no. a chainmail one and I saw a few regular ones. No, yeah, actually, now you bring it up, there was not a lot of Jane hats, which I'm which, kind of very which shocked. Is, uh, very upsetting to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So we'll go on for this then. Favorite cosplayer. Favorite cosplay. All right, I'll give you guys a couple of moments to think. Because um, I'm because with this, this big of a con, it's shares. difficult. It's really difficult. Yeah, that's awesome. um, I'll go first since I've, I, I kind of have an idea what my favorite one is. One of, I have like one or two. One of them was Miss Frizzle from Ma the Magic School Bus. I was she was really good. Ernie's probably got the, Ernie will probably put the picture up. Um, I did give you the I did take a picture. I put it up. Um, that was definitely one of them. Uh, let me see. Uh, then there was uh, I forgot the character's name and the creature, but they're from Nausicaa of the Wind, which is a Miyazaki movie. Uh, that I was really impressed. Um, they had the, the lights. They, they had the lights for eyes, and they changed colors, which in the movie they do. That was pretty cool. Uh, I think those happen to be my probably my favorite cosplayers. Like there was ones I definitely saw them like ooh 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 ooh, and I'm like oh my god that's so cool. But I think those are my two favorite, definitely because they were definitely unique and I was kind of shocked by it. I did see you know what I was funny I saw I saw a couple of the Animaniacs. Wow. That I saw a dot and I think a uh, wacko. That's awesome. So there was some really cool randoms. Well, that was because Paul Dobson and oh, uh, was it uh, Maurice DiMaggio and a couple of other the uh, of those old cartoon voice actors were there, and that's I, th I think they had a lot of those. That's why they had a lot. Of, usually, some of the cosplays are based on some of the guests. A lot of Xenas were there this year. A lot of Zena Gabrielle. There was a yeah, Gab there a lot of Gabrielle's. Zena, Gabrielle, Kalisto, and Ares, actually. And you showed me the picture of them in the parade. From the parade, yeah. Which they actually had their actually, own... I saw uh, Gabrielle and when we were at one of the panels, you and yeah. me. And I'm like, and I looked over, I'm like, oh, that's Kalisto. And you're like, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, that's Kalisto. Her hair was a little darker and than... Then when you, when you saw her walking out, you're like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. The costume, you, the costume you, can, you can tell by the costume, but the girl had brunette hair instead of blonde. But yeah, they had their own section in the parade. They had like at least a, really a, a dozen, at least a dozen Zenas because Lucy Lawless is there. Yeah. And then you had a lot of Power Rangers because three Power Rangers were there. Especially White and Red Rang Green Rangers. Oh, God, they were everywhere. <laughs> I like seeing different seasons besides the Mighty Morphin. You know, throw that out there because, like, mine was Space Rangers. Um, a lot, I got, like I said, I got a lot of compliments. Ernie made a ooh ooh over there, and he got excited. So I think he found his favorite cosplayer. It's a couple of uh, a couple of them. Um, one of my favorite video games when I was growing up was Mortal Kombat. I love that game to death. And I saw I, when I went to the Mortal Kombat photo shoot, I saw a steampunk Sub Zero. Scorpion, Frost, oh, and Smoke. And I'm like, and a Kano too. And I was like, this is amazing. Because, like I said, I loved the Mortal Kombat series. I saw, I saw them in the and, the, and you saw those guys in the Hyatt? Yeah, I thought they were amazing. I, I thought it looked really good. 
Um, Scorpion had the uh, sp he had the spear, but it was like a cane as well. It's cool. like a steampunk spear. So I thought I really liked that. I enjoyed it very much. Okay. I'm sure there's others, but it was just like th that's the one that stood out to me. Oh, you got yours, Tom? Yeah, I, I have to admit, I, I saw a decent amount of Nightwings. I really liked a lot oh, yeah. of the Nightwings. I, I love saw a Young Justice one, too. I loved the Kalisto and Gabrielle. They were amazing. I saw them a few times. I loved their costumes. Um, I, Hit Girl. A lot of Hit Girls, but oh, yeah. I, I, I liked them. A, a lot of Hit Girls, I, I, a lot of Kick Ass. I, I didn't really like any, a lot of Big Daddies. I didn't, see, I didn't really like any of the Kick Asses, but I saw a lot of Hit Girls, okay. and I liked every single one of them. They actually they looked decently well done, the yeah. costume. Um... I'm actually gonna have to say my favorite costume though was easily the floor of the Marriott. <laughs> that that, the, that just guy. just just the imagination and the ideal to do it to me emphasizes the fact that you were at a con and you really had to think creative for a co oh, yeah. costume. Just it, and could you imagine the reference images all he need, that guy, those guys needed? The, oh. the, you know the thing was when they were taking pictures, they literally were making sure that they were sitting or standing in the exact position to match the floor on the ground. And it was like that had to take hours and days to do, and they were just amazingly well done. Could you imagine trying to figure out the pattern on the floor and try to match the pattern perfectly on in clothing? Well, like I said, I mean th these guys to me had some of the most. It, it best costumes for that reason because they had to spend time and that's also con specific cosplay that, that, that you is, can't just do that at any oh convention yeah, in a hotel definitely a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of you know work to do it um, actually now that I'm thinking about it I'm seeing Steve going through his pictures I did see a very good uh, Zelda and Link actually this year together there are a few yeah uh, no, oh also I see a, a lot of them but it's not yeah. like good this one really like they like the Link and the Zelda standing next to each other and the Link was carrying a he wasn't didn't have the sword he had the uh, net oh, the net. he had the net which I was like oh that's that's awesome and they really looked well together so all right, and when Steve, since Steve's looking through his pictures, I'll talk. Because while you guys were thinking, I uh, talking, I popped up a couple more cosplays popped in my head. Um, a lot of mirrors this year too. A lot of mirrors, yes, yes. But um, they're always big on the Disney princesses. That they're always a popular um, one. I saw a lot of like Mario and Luigi crossovers. Like there was a there was a Luigi Ghostbuster in the parade. Uh, there was Mario, Luigi, and a lot of Game of Thrones this year too. Yes, a lot of Game of Thrones. Um, Luigi. Mario and Kirby in the parade. I forgot what I think they were in like one of the like first person shooter sections of the parade or it was like one of the zombie or like Resident Evil like they were in like hardcore fighting and guns attire. Uh, just a lot of that kind of stuff. There was um, why can't I think the name was in my head and then it disappeared. Oh, steampunk Tetris pieces. Yeah, they I had. Guess. That was those. Those were three. They actually had all but the the long piece. They had the, every other the piece. Four, the four straight line. The four straight line one. Yeah. They had every other piece. You got yours, Steve. Yeah, I got a couple that that, that were really good. Um, a uh, there was a Toph from uh, from um, Avatar: Last Airbender who was a spot-on rendition of the character. It was uh, really really good and like kind of made my con. There were like I said, there were a lot of good ones. There was like a there was a uh, Silent Bob, Castle Crashers, so on and so forth. But like I said, my favorites have to be the ones that really made my con were Toph. And because I'm, I'm scrolling through this, so Chrissy can see these as well. Da -da -da. And uh, there oh, was this Aquaman. really badass Aquaman. And people are like, badass Aquaman? Aquaman's a badass. Nobody really gets that until he punches you through a, through a brick building. And I'm trying, right? to, I'm trying to think and if this, it's Injustice or if it's guy, another version. Oh, this is just badass Aquaman. This guy made, made like studded leather Aquaman armor. Personally, made some of the Aquaman armor, and he looks absolutely ridiculous. It's yes, no, how, I've how, you how awesome he you looks. You showed me that picture, and yeah. when I saw it, it was freaking awesome. Oh, that, that Aquaman. Amazing. That, I remember I forgot about that. We've um, on, actually on Wednesday and Thursday night before the con, we had some hardcore DC <laughs> uh, debates yeah, <laughs> between yeah. movies and um, the movies and the video games. We had a lot of fun That's with that. Something you don't see a lot that we didn't see a lot of actually. When we were online getting our tickets, there weren't a lot of people in costume. 
I will say on Thursday. Well, I will usually Thursday you do see a lot. The, the, I will say this. It seems on Thursday uh, there's a few people go in costume, but a lot of people on that day they're just getting their badge. They want to get their badge, go back to the hotel, see what they want to do if they haven't already planned it, and relax a little. They don't want to really stay around the con. And oh and I have to admit, because they're only planned to be there for an hour or two, they don't go into costume. A lot do, but not as uh, not not like a. I would say it's, I think maybe we saw maybe while we were walking towards the line, people going behind us. I think maybe there was maybe seven or eight people at most, and there was at least two hundred people walked into the line behind us. You know, yeah. so I mean, there, it's it like I said, like there are people, but there aren't as many that go Thursday, and because it's usually you're only out for an hour or so, you want to go back to the hotel after you get your badge and go through the program and go and decide. Oh, oh, there's I know this. Go hard. through all the panels that you're probably not going to go to. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> or even like go through. Like I was just going through the guest list, and I'm like, oh my god, these people were there. I didn't realize it. I would have loved to have gotten their autograph for at least go over and say, I love your work. But um, <laughs> or go to a panel that they were at that I didn't know of. Well, usually, like we said, um, with most cons, Saturday and Sunday are the big cosplay days. Well, like, uh, yeah, but I'm just saying. Thursday, yeah, I noticed it wasn't as many. There I were a couple. To Otakon, everybody freaking cosplays Thursday, even though they're only picking up their badges. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's because also um, with Otakon, the pre-reg pickup is like four or five hours long, so everybody's there. Yeah. When it's like a 12-hour pick, um, time window, yeah. You could you could end up being cosplaying and going there, and there's only ten people there. So not as many people are yeah. going to see your. There's not less of a chance of a lot of people seeing your cosplay. Um, Wednesday cosplay. Really? Oh yeah, we were walking around on yeah, this. There was, there was at least a stormtrooper. Yes. Maybe a, a couple of cosplayers, but they were like the more simple stuff on Wednesday when we were. Yeah, Wednesday night though we got here, and they weren't that. Uh, it didn't seem like there was like, that many. Uh, no, no, it's just the. Twitter saying I think it's just the cosplay. fact that they were here Wednesday night, and a couple of people did because they were getting yeah. ready. Well, exactly. you really are here. Like we're not saying exactly at the Peachtree Center, but we went down there for dinner Wednesday, and as we were walking around, you were just seeing people like coming up with bags of luggage and four and, pieces of luggage oh, each. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh my God, can't believe I'm just getting here now." And other people were just like, "And you're sitting there going to myself, you have four. I have I have two pieces of luggage, and I and I'm not cosplaying. You have five pieces. You are cosplaying every day, and you have amazing <laughs> costumes." Over that there. Awesome. That are big elaborate ones. Yeah. Um, this the next one kind of topic kind of leans in with cosplayers. Um, I'm mostly gonna be talking to Ernie because he went to most of the, most of these. It's photo shoots. Um, that's a big thing with the cosplayers because it's a good chance to interact with other cosplayers who are doing similar stuff to you. I unfortunately missed both Power Ranger photo shoots because either there was a miscommunication or a misunderstanding on my part with the um, photo shoots, but. There was DC, Marvel, um, Disney, Disney, well, Disney general, just Disney general. in general. Uh, like Tom, um, Ernie says, there's the Mortal Kombat. There was a whole schedule that we were able to get a hold of that we just went through with yeah. all the photo shoots. There was the steampunk photo shoots. It was just so yeah. much. But yeah, Ernie, tell us about. Okay. What do you want to know about them? Um, just say in general what you went to and let's what see, you saw. Which, the ones I went to were Disney. Um, the Legion of Heroes. I think I went to a small DC, a, a small Marvel shoot. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what else I went to. Um, small I Marvel to shoot. The Disney, one, the Disney, yeah, Disney one. I think I already mentioned Mortal Kombat, as I mentioned earlier. Which ones did I go to? Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones that I went to. Uh, well, you explain some of the new costumes in the yeah. store or the cosplays happen. <clears throat> So, I mean, you, uh, you did show me that that Bell and uh, uh, Beast together, and that was an that, amazing that, costume. Yeah, like. That was a really good one. The Bell had the the full yellow dress. The Beast was a full yeah. Beast, like probably comparable to si like yeah, actual yeah. size. Yeah. And, and like they actually had, uh, you show, you, I saw the pictures from you. It yeah. was them actually dancing, like you know, they had the, the like the formal dance. It looked like, and I was like, I would have loved to have seen that. I'm very upset I didn't, but that that's a really great idea for a cosplay, and it looked like they had fun. Oh yeah, no, they did. They had a good time with it. The, the dancing part, I actually, I went up to them and I asked them if we can dance in front of the fountain for one of our music videos. 
And that one, and then on top of that, they were part of a group. They had a, they had the clock, the candlestick, oh, yeah. and the main. Yeah, I forgot them. So they had the and full on ensemble. Those three were actually pretty cute because they actually acted very, uh, like Lumiere <laughs> and Coswork in the main. They acted very, you know, I am, I oh, we must be on time, and oh, you, you, you we can always be a little bit yeah. lenient, and da 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 da. It was yeah. very. Very interesting. Yeah, they acted the part there. The, another good one was um, at first it was ju um, they had an Aladdin group, but at first it was Aladdin was just there. Then a Princess Jasmine showed up, and then when the genie showed up, oh man, all hell broke loose at that <laughs> point because it was the genie. As it was like, hey, can I um have a video shoot with you and Al? And he's like, oh, oh my god, like I had to. <laughs> Like started screaming, and as soon as they got the attention, all the photographers went towards them, and they just started shooting pictures with them as one big group. Uh, so that was that was nice with that one. Um, the the other shoot I went to was for DC was a was a Marvel shoot, and that was that was like the, um, the Legion of Heroes. It was a big Marvel shoot, all heroes from both DC and Marvel that I remember, and. Um, that one was there a lot of, uh, actually going back to Disney. Were there a lot of Disney villains? Because I know a lot of times they have like some of the conventions they have Disney villain shoots, like villain uh, shoots. Villain on. shoots. Was, yes. Was there enough villains to do a villain shoot, or there wasn't. I don't think there was enough villains. There were definitely a lot more good guys over bad guys there, but the villains did have their presence known. Like you saw an Ursula there, actually a beautiful Ursula, where she had her um, <laughs> she had the the uh, what the what the f is it called um that uh. I showed you that one, the video. I showed you that, Chrissy. Her, um, it was her, like, the os uh, like octopus legs. Yeah, they, her tentacles. Actually, yeah, her there we go, tentacles. I actually, later on, we actually, the panel, the dragon sex, and a few others that he went to, yeah. she was one of the runners of it. <laughs> she didn't have the legs, she took them off, yeah. but she still had the dress on, because I saw the pictures from you guys. She was actually the one running those those panels, and she's like, yeah, I had a great time today doing Ursula, but she was happy to do her panels, too, uh. so, I mean, like, you know. Okay, no, it, it was a good one that that because she had the legs up and I was able to record that for a video as well, and then there was another Ursula I saw in the lobby of the Hyatt, who had her laugh down to a T, like you heard the laugh and like wow that was Ursula like you can close your eyes and it was just, it was her she was actually entered in the masquerade and she won, I think best villain overall. So uh, for the show, so that was a good one there. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the others. Like I went, the Legion of Heroes was both, which was both Marvel and DC. I was able to go to that. that I saw a lot of good, a lot of good cosplayers there. One that I saw, one that was really good was just an old school Superman, but the guy had the body for it. He was built like Superman. I'm sure that if I had a bullet and shot it at him, he probably would have blocked it. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> what? It bounced off him. Exactly. Let's see, that was a good one there. The Mortal Kombat shoot I had a lot of fun with because, as I said earlier, Mortal Kombat's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, let's see what else was there. The smaller DC, the smaller Marvel shoot, I keep getting the two mixed up, was, was good there. And I think that was all the photo shoots I went to. There were a lot more I planned on going to, but I just couldn't make it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going on an hour thirty-eight right now. So, uh, what what do we? Uh, what's our next? Shall we move on or? There's yes, actually, we're almost done. Oh, sweet. What was the last thing we had to talk about? I did say it to you. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, you wanted to talk about photo shoots. No, but there was something else I was gonna. Yeah, talk about. photo shoots are a lot of fun. You can meet a lot of good cosplayers there. Meet a lot of uh. Oh, of photographers yeah. there as well. You exchange okay. cards with people. So, all right. So we got our last topic here. Yeah. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention earlier, we were talking about the aquarium. Oh. Um, there's this one thing you can do at the aquarium. For two hundred and fifty dollars, you can swim with the whale sharks, which is something. It's really. Yeah, uh, we actually. Chris has wanted to do it for years. Yes, Pyre Chris, our friend Pyre Chris, he's been wanting to doing it since the first year he found out about it. He wanted to do it this year, but he said he wanted to since he, even though he's got a better paying job than he did before, he wants to save his money, pay his bills, and then any debt he's yeah, in. Be all an adult and all. Yeah, know. you know he wants to be a responsible adult. Who does that? nowadays um, so he was holding he was gonna hold off for a year or two before doing that and Chris turned 30 this year this summer right in June Chris turned 30 he's and an old man. Oh. oh yeah he's not the oldest one here but he's an old man um, 
he we decided with a bunch of friends we all chipped in and when he got off the plane thursday we surprised him by dragging him to the aquarium and he got to swim with them yeah literally we had to drag him off the plane yeah he had this great idea to go to go on facebook and ask all of our friends who wanted to as well as ourselves who would like to pay to go to let chris swim with the whale sharks and all of our friends know that he's a, a fanatic about sharks, and, and he wanted and to do this. And aqua, uh, marine life in general. He wanted, he wanted to do this for years. So we were like, you know, let's invite all of our friends, $5 a head each. Some of our friends threw in $20, $30, and we were, like, really surprised. But there were other people who were just like, all I have is $5. And we're like, we really only need $5 from the amount of people we offered. Um, the only problem was is at one point over the summer, Chris didn't know about it. He went on a family trip with his brother, who is leaving for Japan in a few months for uh, for grad school, and his sister's friend, who is up from New Zealand. Uh, the four of them went to Disney, and he he then said he could not take the time off for Dragon Con. He wanted to spend that trip with his family, so we actually canceled the idea until we found out two weeks ago that he got the time off. Yeah, it was a week before. The, the week before the con, we found out he had gotten the time off. He bought his plane ticket and he was coming, especially since we'd already pre-regged. So at the last minute, we got everyone. Well, actually, you were like not. Yeah, I was gonna. And I said, go on Facebook and just see if who we can get. And we still got. We still we got pl enough. People who yep. Money. We got about fifth, about ten or fifteen people threw in money. We got and we got we got it, Chris. I paid. Bought, I bought it uh, last Monday. Of course, Chris decided to get sick the weekend before Dragon Con, but he was he 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 trooped through it and. Um, he, we literally, when he got off the plane Thursday night, we dragged him to the aquarium just before he had to be there, and he got to swim with the whale sharks, and I don't think he's ever been happier. He yeah, was... Well, you can see the picture. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure Chris has got, um, Ernie's been putting up pictures from us showing him. Yeah. Yes, he said this is his favorite Dragon Con now. Uh, Ernie's got some pictures. The Chris got a group picture um, <laughs> with the other guys that went swimming. Of course, they were like three or four Chris's. Um, DVD as well. He got yeah, the DVD of his swim and we were able, because we were there with him, we were able to follow um, and watch them swim through the tanks. We were able to see him and we know he had a blast. So if you ever have the money and the time, do it. It's it's one of those once in a life, not necessarily once in a lifetime, but it's definitely, Something you got it's an experience. Day. It's a fun thing. It's an experience. It's not something you want to do every year, but if you ever have the money and you want to have a good time, it's, it's somebody nice. like somebody really it's really about, that kind of thing. How it's long amazing. Was it? Maybe like yeah. an hour long. It was about they were in the water for uh, about forty five uh, minutes, and then while you you're get to, you get to go um, go in the back of the Atlantic Aquarium, uh, the oh, yeah, Atlantic Aquarium yeah, yeah. and see like how they do things. Oh, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. What they did was is bef while they were getting them ready for the swim, they showed them some back behind the scenes um, tours, and then while we were waiting for them after they got out of the water to get cleaned up, we were also given a tour with uh, anybody else who was. Who had friends that were swimming? It's definitely an experience. It you don't have to be able. You don't have to know how to swim to do it. You don't have to know how to snorkel. They'll help you. Yeah. So that's definitely that's one of those outside the con experiences that's a lot of fun. All right, we're getting towards the end here. Um, so this is only what I said the last topic. I think that's the last thing we should talk. That's about. the last thing we should talk about. We're gonna move to the last, the last. Oh, what's that? But I was telling you that. Oh, hotel information. Um, that is the biggest oh, oh yeah. Um, the hotels were the. Well, do we have anything else to talk about? Um, the only thing is, is that left is you know the basic usual ending stuff. Okay. Um, um so you uh, we'll let Tom because he's he's kind of a professional at this. All right. Um, Dragon Con, Great Con, like I said. The thing is, it's uh, basically there's it's in Peachtree Center downtown Atlanta. The there are five hotels. There is the Western, the Sheridan, the Hilton, the Marriott, and the Hyatt. Those are the five hotels that run the con. They they have they have uh, you know they have all the stuff in there. They have you know places to go. It's right. It, they, they have you know, like you can go downstairs in your pajamas to go to a panel at 10 a.m. in the morning if you want to, which is a great thing. Um, I did that a few times last year when we were staying at the Westin. Um, there are other also there are other hotels in the area that um, over yeah they're overflow hotels uh, because I think uh, I think if I remember last year we looked at the Hyatt and they told us that they like October first or something they opened yeah. up 
for Dragon Con next year, and they were sold out within an hour. And that has like they have like 44 floors, and they have like 20 or 30 rooms on each floor, and they have 44 floors. They were sold out in an hour. So, I mean, it's a big thing to get a hotel. But there are hotels, you know, like we're in an overflow hotel this year. It's not that far. Um, it's not that far. It was maybe, it was tw- what, 20 minutes to get there? Well, by, by not the e- yeah, by the subway. It's it, they, they have shuttles. There are shuttles because I didn't see the shuttles a few times. We've been here a few times, so we knew the train schedule pretty well. Um, besides that, though, uh, I have to admit that the one downside to this hotel more than anything else, is we did not get Dragon Con TV, because <laughs> Dragon Con TV is something that they put up in the ho- in the uh, in, in the other hotels, and it is the funniest shit in the world. They have they have like uh, they do like the Adult Swim uh, questions. One of my favorites is uh, a girl actually goes, "Hi, I'm 29 years old. I'm 29 and I'm young and I'm not terrible. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm 29 and I'm not terrible looking. And I'm looking for a boyfriend at the con. Do you have any advice?" And they go, "Let me get this straight. You're young. You're female. You're, not you're single and you're not terrible looking. And you're looking for a guy. And you're looking for a boyfriend at the con." Look at a guy in a line and smile. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, and then then after which it goes, con guys are really easy or something like that. It's there's a bunch of them. Uh, you'll you'll Hard like videos. like we said, Bob and Carl. You'll see hundreds of videos with them. Uh, they have other joke things like um, what, what was Parody one? TV oh no no! One of them I saw this year was uh, Hannibal Lecter. The uh, Hannibal Lecter's Hunger Games will not be shown tonight. <laughs> and they'll go on to they like do like you know little spoofs on shows and stuff. And it's just it's just funny stuff. It's a great thing to watch. I personally say I love it. It's I mean like if you're really in your room at the middle of the middle of the night you've no, or you're not feeling well like Montana, turn it on. You'll have a great time for like two hours just sitting there laughing at the stupidity. But uh, if you want to get a hotel at the con, gotta go early. Gotta try early. You gotta try it a lot. Um, but there are overflow hotels, so it's pretty cool. Um, another thing with the Dragon Con TV is they will also, if re- there's really popular panels and like the Masquerade, they will they, film. They, they will, they'll, they will, they will they film it, and it they'll, live. and they'll, put, they'll show it live, or they will rebroadcast yeah, it later in the day. I, I went to a Dragon Con one, uh, Dragonfly, uh, Firefly <laughs> panel last year, and I said, oh, they're going to play it on TV because the year before I tried to get one, I couldn't get in. Um, I actually went to the panel, had a great time, and then left to go to another panel. I was texting Chrissy, and she goes, she was actually watching Dragonfly TV. And as I'm going into the panel right after that one, which was for Spike and Drusilla, actually, Chrissy texts me, they're about to start playing the Firefly one. They're about to replay it on Dragon Con TV. I'm like, that's when it was, because we thought it was at the same time. It wasn't live. It was an hour later. But Some of them, they... But it was it, they, they, like they do that, and they really have like the, the popular panels really will be played over and over. Yeah, for those who can't get in, or if they can't get to the panel, yeah. like they have something else to do, they will do that. And uh, I think Ernie had something to say too. Yeah, the one the, the thing is with the uh, the host hotels, I gotta say is that they um they do give a date on when the rooms are open. Now we tried booking the Marriott last year, the one with the uh. Like 50 floors, some insane amount of floors, and they gave us a date, which was early October. But something happened with their computer system that w- that uh, actually opened up the uh, the the rooms a week early. Yeah, I that. Because when people went on to book the site to book the hotel, the Marriott, it was already booked. Like it started, they start booking at 9 a.m. They were really surprised. Oh, people because who stayed there? They were like. What happened? I'm always at the Marriott. Exactly. So it's just like it's sort of like when you um, when you book the hotel, call and ask them when when will they start giving out rooms? Because some places there's a lot of specifics with it because some rooms you have to you pay for your hotel room when you when you book it. You pay for one night to know that you're going to be there. I was also probably thinking I don't know what hotel this hap- what hotel this happens in, but like I said before, 400 guests. All these guests need rooms, and DragonCon provides them. Yeah. I don't know what hotel they're in. I don't know if they use, you know, 50 rooms in this hotel, 50 rooms in this hotel. I think they probably do. I, I probably, probably, they probably do, but I'm just saying, like, oh, you may, like, go on and be like, how are they already have 70, you know, like, 100 rooms already booked, and, you know, they just opened just right now. 
uh, you got to remember, they bring a lot of guests and music acts also, so they have to have places for them. The people who actually are staff at the con, you know, already want to be, they, rooms, they yeah. need rooms too, you know. Yeah. So, so they I mean, probably get early, a like, say, yeah. they probably get early access yeah, I mean, to them. Like, then it literally goes out of their way, especially those hotels, to be like, we're having Dragon Con. We're making, we're out, we're selling all of our rooms this week. We are having people at the bars, people at the at the restaurants. We're going to give deals. We're going to make sure we're going to sell out. Dragon Con wants to book 100, 120 rooms right now for staff and panelists and and, and you know whatever. We're oh. not going to say no to them. Well, it's also they also have non-con guests too. They can't they can't sell out the whole hotel to just the con. They have to have people who are from out of town for sports events and all that kind of they stuff. They have a block of rooms set for people for at Dragon Con rates. Yeah. So they keep they have like a whole set of blo uh, whole set of rooms set for them, and whatever rooms that they have left, it's open to it. Whoever gets it first gets it first because Labor Day weekend in Atlanta is crazy. I'm not sure if you guys talked about that earlier. Yeah. They have the baseball. They have the okay. Atlanta Braves playing all weekend long. They have the uh, Chick uh, Filla football game. It's basically, it's basically the opening weekend of college football this weekend. And it's uh, always really? Labor Day, and that's why you see all these college football fans here because they always have a game at the Georgia Dome. Uh, uh, I don't. Thank God it didn't happen this year, but last year also, Atlanta has a food festival in uh, oh, late yeah. in, in in mid August. And for some reason last year, it got pushed back to the end of August, so it was the same weekend as Dragon Con, and that was a big over. It's 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 a little bit. It's another part of Atlanta, not because we're downtown. This was a few blo uh, about a mile away, the other part of the Atlanta. But it was the food the food festival, and I remember when we were getting on the hotel at the Western at one point. Uh, there was there was a couple, and they were getting on. They're like, "Oh yeah, we're always here for the food festival." What are you guys here for? Because we see you guys in costumes. We've been seeing the people in costumes all day. What's going on? And then right. we told them about Dragon Con. They're like, oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> We're here for the food festival. And I was like, there's a food festival? <laughs> and uh, we found out that there was one in Atlanta a little, like a week or two before. So. All right. Well, I think that's as much as we can talk about um, uh, Dragon Con. If you, um, so we're going to move on a little bit. Um, if you do have any specific questions or any, you know, your opinions, definitely make comments down below. Um, yeah, even also, if you want to look at just Dragon Con because you like what you said. Yeah. Dragon Con website. Yep, the Dragon Con website, right. Dragon Con TV. All right. So we're going to go to the final questions of the of the uh, the night. Uh, likes, like highlights, and non highlight like the dislikes of the weekend just pick a couple and we'll go from there dislike no firefly panel <laughs> you can tell that i love firefly um and literally i only want start watching it like four years ago i am in love with the show um likes cosplays i really liked a lot of the cosplays this year uh, i don't think i saw a single costume that i found I didn't like all of them, but I didn't see a single costume I disliked. It was like Disney movies. They're not all good, but none of them are bad. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to say that. I, I, there was a, I, I liked a lot of the cosplays. They were very, very, very cute ones this year. Steve, highlight and uh, dislike? Um, highlight, highlight was probably the Defiance panel. I had, a, <laughs> I had a lot of fun at the Defiance panel. It was great to, talk, to, to hear the... Uh, Hear the guest speakers and the, the ca and the guests talk about the characters in the show. I hadn't even really planned to go to that panel. I just kind of got there. Um, dislike was probably like never like m almost never making to any panel I actually intended to see. Yeah. Um, it got lost a couple times. That you know, mixed up a couple hotels. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my my like and dislike. Uh, I Steve actually just reminded me of another dislike. I don't know how this happened. But almost every panel I wanted to see was happening at the same time as another panel I wanted to see. <laughs> they can't do the, anything about that. The, the, I know there was only <laughs> there was only one panel, which was Dragon Sex, which was the only panel I wanted to see at 10 p.m. But every other panel, it was like the Power Morphicon one, and this one's going on. And I was like, great, I have to go choose. And I went to the other one because you were recording Power Morphicon. But it was like. This one and this one are happening at the same time. This one and this one. I'm like, seriously, all of my panels at the same time. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they can't do anything about that. Also, another big point I want to make out. I'm sorry. <laughs> another big point. Panels get there early because some of these panels, they will oh. book... Like like lines I like, for, like for last, last year, I remember there was a few lines at panels. But this year, 
I mean, I went to, I, I would get on lines and I would see lines forming that were all, almost, you know, they, they, me and Steve actually got into the shield panel, Agents of Shield. They cut a line off at one point because they were like, there's no standing room. They literally said, you can't come in. Yeah, the yeah. fire marshal and it was, apparently they were like, been really, really hard on yeah, the Yeah, and, they were, and they, were like, they were like, if there's any seats open, take them. And they were letting people in at one point, like one by one, because right. they were like, and it was they just, did that at the brink. Yeah, and, and mm-hmm. they 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 do that very carefully now. So if you want to get into a panel, make sure you get there early. All right, Ernie, any uh, highlight and dislike? Highlight was definitely the um, it was two. It was the zombie walk, which I I always enjoy. It's every every year I've been going here. I always go to the zombie walk, and the um, the Mortal Kombat photo shoot. That, that was one thing. The dislike that I definitely did have was um, the organization of what happened when it rained. Because when it rained, I think on Sunday afternoon, mm-hmm. is when everybody packed inside and they actually had to close off the sky bridges to the hot, from the Hilton, Hyatt. I think the Hyatt to the Marriott, and they had to close no, off. The Hilton to the Marriott, I remember that. It was the Hilton. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, but I knew I from. That, that was close I, at one point. Yeah, I know the Marriott into the Hyatt was closed. Mm-hmm. They had to do single file for everywhere else, and you just see the lines just going. Like even from the Hyatt. From the uh, from the mall, it started at the like at the beginning of the Hyatt, and then it went all the way down to what's the I think Andrew Young International Boulevard, which is where the Westin was. It went all the way down to there, so it was just crazy. It was like I understand that it was like a big mess, but it was like a little okay. Let's get a little organized here. It took them a while, but I think that yeah. was definitely well, it could definitely could be done faster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily it only rained for a couple of hours when we thought it was gonna rain all weekend. Uh, Montana highlight and dislike besides being sick um <clears throat> i would say the best part about the con was sleeping with <laughs> <laughs> i mean obviously going since i've been to a, a decent amount of cons i've seen a lot of people a lot of cosplayers and things like that um but this is bar none the most cosplayers and the craziest cosplays I've seen at any con ever. So I will say definitely pro is the cosplay. It's like if you even if you go, you don't go to a single panel, you don't go any of the performances, you don't even go into the dealer's room. Just the amount of people and the crazy cosplays that people have, it's unbelievable. Definitely uh, definitely something to, to go even just to people watch. I mean, it's crazy. Um, dislike um I don't know. I, I again didn't really spend too much time at the con, unfortunately. So um, I really can't say I have a dislike because right. I didn't really experience anything that made me not like it. <laughs> Steve's got something else to say. I'd like to make a notation about um, cosplaying and picture taking. There were like twelve. Well, no, I'm exaggerating a little bit. There were like. Eight to ten rooms, speci- empty rooms specifically set aside for people to walk into and take pictures, so you didn't have to clog the aisles and clog like the general room, so you could like so people w- could just you know take pictures, do their business, and, and move on without interrupting and interfering with everybody else. I did notice that. This Please year. use them. This is your public service announcement from from Out of Time Productions. <laughs> it was very, it is very helpful to do so, and remember that that, that exists. Yes, I did notice that this year. Um, I actually noticed one of the rooms because um, that was actually where one of the Power Ranger photo shoots apparently ended up in, and I didn't know about it. Uh, yes, they did have rooms for specifically, like, if you were near the room, you quick grabbed the cosplayer, you ran into the room, or sometimes the cosplayers hung out in the room for like an hour or so, yeah. and they got their pictures taken. Um, I guess my highlight, I hate to say it, was meeting a bunch of Power Rangers because the only ones I've ever met was, um, I met Robert Axelrod um, at Icon last year. We, he, he did a panel with me. Tom and our friend Lee, and then I met him at um, Zenkai Con one year. Uh, so meeting to Jason. To Monica next year. <laughs> we want to go to Paramorphicon next year, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I definitely loved meeting Jason, David, Frank. I've heard mixed reviews on him, but it was still fun meeting him. Walter Jones, like I loved growing up on Power Rangers and Karen Ashley. It was just great to to meet them, get them my pictures with them. Um, my dislike, I guess, would agree with uh, Ernie was. Um, the the weather on Sunday did make things a little cramped, more cramped in the hotels than they usually are. Uh, it's there's so many people there, but it 
the sky bridge is getting clogged up. They could have been organized a little bit better, but I think they were playing with around with how things were being organized now that the dealer's room got moved. So they had they did have extra room for making lines for panels. So that was a good thing. They knew it. They immediately realized, okay, we've got this space. Let's use it, and we always get lines. They did a lot of the Disney lining, um, the, the zigzag lines. I have to admit, I don't agree with the fact of, that they moved the walk of frame out of the Hilton. Because the Walk of Fame does have a very long line, and that was a very good thing to be in one building by itself. Well, what it was is they did um, one of the dealers' rooms that used to be the dealers' room was the the main Walk of Fame, mm -hmm. Walk of Fame, and then the downstairs dealers' room was turned into the Features Walk of Fame, and those are the f like five or six actors that will have a mile long line. So they each had their own individual space for lines. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, they did move. Like Lucy Lawless was down there; she did eventually get moved up to the upstairs because most of her lines weren't that long, so she got moved upstairs. All right. Next, last thing, ratings. Rating 1 being 1 to 10, 1 being horrible, 10 being, you know, heaven on earth and why? We'll start with Montana since <laughs> I, I can't even tell you, Just from what you experienced. From from what I experienced at the con, which was a day and a half's worth of stuff and one panel, um, I would rate it like a seven, but I don't know, so I can't really give you an honest answer. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, he couldn't do that. Next year, Montana, next year, we'll, we'll try harder. Uh, Steve. Uh, I think I'll give the con a, uh, an overall an eight. Um, it was fun. There was a lot of things to do. It was um, uh, entertaining and uh, pretty much everything expected. Um, it's not like a nine or a ten because uh, they could work out. They could work on. Yeah, they could work some on their overall organization. There were some um, some shortcomings here and there. Uh, some of the tracks definitely needed uh, more space and better room. A uh, few a uh, few things needed more. Uh, like again, needed more spacing and how they handled the weather um, uh, should have been considered. Uh, but like I said, an eight eight out of ten. All right, uh, Tom. I'm laughing because I remember last year when we gave these reviews, everybody was like, 9.2. I think the lowest was like a 7, uh, an 8.5. Um, I have to say, once again, I, I agree with Steve this year. The organization just seemed a lot worse than it has in the past two years. Um, and that, that really does give a drag to the con, in my opinion. Um... I, I mean, everything all overall, I was really hurt because my bands weren't here and there was no Firefly. And I mean, there was just a lot of, I felt Weedonverse lacked a lot because they were really doing so much on Marvel Avengers. And I was like, that's not really, you know, there's always been so much more. Why are you guys focusing on that so much? But um, overall, you know, it was still pretty, it was great con. But like they said, uh, Steve said, you know, it, very, very bad lacking of stuff. Sorry. Um, what number? Uh, I'm going to have to say, because of the lack, I'm going to have to actually go with like an 8.3, 8.4. I'm, I can't go, I can't, I can't go 8.5, but I have to give it above an 8. I'm sorry. Okay. Ernie. Oh. How are you? All right. Um, I'll go with a 9, because I had a... I delved into Dragon Con a little bit more because I really wanted to p really try out these cosplay music videos and try to see how well I can do them and see where I could kind of be like, okay, I can compete with the big guys. So I looked into like a lot of photo shoots. I looked into a lot of like cosplayers and um, just try to just like just try to compete up there. And do by doing that, I actually had a better time because I was able to meet more people. I was able to get out of the room and go about the convention, see it all, do it or try to do it all. And yeah, so I would give it a nine. Like oh, the main events were great. Cosplayers were great. People were great. Hey, let's drink. <laughs> Best thing about Dragon Con, it's Drinking Con. Yeah, Drinking Con. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna give it an eight, uh, an eight as well. Um, it was definitely. Well, I'm trying to add at the same time. Uh, <laughs> it was a uh, a lot of fun. I did enjoy it, but like I said, um, just certain things kind of um brought it down. It's about eight altogether. Yeah, I think it's. Let me see. It is well, eight altogether. Ah! 
Yeah, no, it is. Um, no, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it on my calculator as I'm talking. I'm trying to do it as I do the. As I'm calculating as I talk. Um, like Tom, I was really disappointed that we didn't have the Firefly Drinking Song panel because it's one of the big things that we really look forward to. That I really look forward to besides seeing the Emerald Rose guys. Especially considering the fact you actually understood what the songs meant this year. Yeah, the past two years I've gone, I enjoyed the panel for what it was, and then in um, when I was just my family was displaced by Sandy, I literally took took it upon myself to watch the entire series and the movie and now all those little you know inside jokes and all the songs and all that I now understand because I've watched the show um, but meeting the Rangers was the big was definitely a highlight for me um, we did have a lot of fun so definitely neat so the overall average is like an 8.06 or something like that because Tom had to be odd with the point three or point four <laughs> uh, okay Last final question. We got you guys coming back next year? Just shout it out. Yes! All right. <laughs> so you heard it, Dragon Con. We are definitely coming back next year. And like I said, we uh, Tom and I said before earlier. Give we're us free press. <laughs> no, um, we're probably gonna have like ten people want to come with us next year. I'm not. I don't know if all of eight of the ten of them are gonna come, but we got a lot of people coming with us next year. So um, also on top of that, with Dragon Con, if you did go to the con, definitely like my friend Clyde said. Go into the app, go onto the website, rate the, the panels, rate the rooms and buildings and the con itself. Like so that people you like. Yes, definitely give your opinion and your feedback. They use that to make the con better and to make better decisions. Uh, I guess that's it for us at Dragon Con. If you want, um, when we do get the full wrap up, for uh, any coverage, we definitely go to thefanspov.com. You can follow us on Twitter, at thefanspov. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash thefanspov. Our YouTube page is youtube.com slash thefanspov1. Uh, we also are on Tumblr, uh, DeviantArt. We're, we're, we're following all the social medias now. We are, we are everywhere. We pictures of everything. Oh, we've got tons pictures. of pictures. Ernie's probably going to be throwing them up in videos, plus with all of our... Um, I'm watching our, one of them right now. Our B footage. <laughs> All right, uh, the next time you will see the fans POV is in actually in like a week or so at Anime USA in um, Washington, D.C., September 13th through the 15th. So we will see you there. I'm Chris C. Lawler with the fans POV at DragonCon 2013. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Let's eat.